in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed there is a message that does not work there are many of us there are many aspects of our lives that are not working and people tell us just keep working it, it is faith one day it will work we need to define what is faith and what is error because the end of faith is a performance hallelujah so tonight i like our hearts to be open see this is a school every time you come here thank god for the opportunity to fellowship and relate with one another but don't get carried away realize that you are about to hear something you may not have heard before and because these words are not spoken in the flesh they have the ability to impart grace ezekiel chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 it says the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet he said arise and shine not because you are tired of sitting you will remain there he said for your light has come not your light is available your light has come to you lift your voice in one minute and say father visit me appear unto me through your word as you did in shiloh appear unto me through your word tonight and by the ministry of the holy spirit i submit myself to the dealings of the spirit I understand that your word is able to change me and to give me an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. It's always a joy to have us around every week. For those of you standing, Please, let there be no vacant seats inside, please. Ushers, let's occupy every vacant seat. There's no reason why there should be seats. Maybe aside from this topmost ones, every other seat, please. Occupy it. If you can share, share. If they can come in and sit. When they were hungry, Jesus said, tell them to sit down because bread is about to come. If you can humble yourself. Then you will enjoy the bread of the spirit. Brothers and sisters, hear me. I want to encourage those of you outside. No matter what it will take, pay the price now. See, the price you don't pay now, you will pay tomorrow. But the trouble is you will pay it with interest tomorrow. Hallelujah. So pay whatever price you have to pay now. Build your spirit. Help yourself build your spirits hallelujah holy he's holy are you lord god almighty worthy is the lamb worthy is the lamb you are holy, you're holy, are you Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Just the voice is your holy. You are holy, yes you are holy, are you Lord God Almighty, 
What is the Lamb? What is the Lamb? One more time, you're holy. You are holy. 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 Are you Lord God Almighty? we prophesy let it be so let it be so that we are changed we are transformed in his presence let's be the name of the lord spirit of the living god we thank you I cannot have enough. I cannot have enough. I cannot have enough of you. This is my confession. I cannot have enough. I cannot have enough. I cannot have enough of you. It takes hunger to get deeper with God. I cannot have enough. I cannot have enough. I cannot have enough of you. One more time. We cannot have enough. We cannot have enough. We cannot have enough of you. Spirit of the living God, we submit ourselves to you tonight. Oh, great rabbi, help us. Open up the things of the spirit unto us and cause us to hear and to understand. Teach us that which is true and authentic. And by knowledge, cause us to rise beyond the limitations that come with this system. Lord, we submit ourselves to your dealings. We humble ourselves and we take up meek hearts in your presence. Hearts that are palpable, hearts that are malleable, hearts that are, are allowed to be molded and to be changed in your presence. Equip us through knowledge, equip us through revelation. Let us never be familiar with the things of the Spirit. And cause, O oh God, that we will not hear these things just as information, but that they will sustain the ability to be received in our spirit, and that they will produce a hundredfold in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I welcome every one of us once again. There are people coming in from everywhere. Those of you who came in from Joss, God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time. And then, let me not be biased. Other states, we are all welcome. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's get to the word of God. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14. There's a mighty presence of God in this place. We give him all the praise for the gift of his presence. Without the presence of God, we are only storytellers. It takes the presence of God to effect changes. There are many people seated here who are sick. You didn't even come to hear anything. There are people who came sick. Um, the fact that we have miracle services at the end of the month, it doesn't mean that other services are not miracle services. We just dedicate time to minister to the needs of people according to the measure of grace that he has given us. This is an apostolic ministry. Hallelujah. 
Paul speaking, he said, a man approved of God with miracles and signs. There are activities of the spirit that follow these kinds of ministry. And this is why we take out the time to generously minister to the people of God. I'm one preacher that believes that I've been called to minister to the needs of the people. Hallelujah. I always tell men of God when I have the privilege to speak in pastors conferences I tell them if you are not prepared to minister to the needs of people get set for empty chairs in your church hallelujah because the people don't just come because they love you they come because they have serious problems hallelujah and so while we pray and fast and prepare for every meeting every week I like you to understand that part of our prayer is not just that the word prevails in our minds. The Bible says, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. We don't just want the word of God to prevail alone. But we want the sick to be healed in every service. Hallelujah. We want the oppressed to be delivered. So as the word of God is coming right now, I'd like you to prepare your heart. We may be talking about something else. See, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit's goal is to see himself when he looks at you. And every time he looks at you and sees that there is, there is something that is planted in you that was not planted by him, he will take it away. We can be teaching on relationship and family life. We can be teaching on finances. Yet God is healing sick bodies because there is an anointing. And that anointing must answer to why it is there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Second Corinthians 13, verse 14. We there. One, two, read. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. One more time. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hallelujah. One of the greatest blessings, I believe, of God in my life, aside from the gracious knowledge of the person of the Holy Spirit, one of the greatest blessings that I consider from God to me is the deliverance that he brought to my mind by letting me know that the kingdom is founded upon definite structures. I, I, do you understand what I'm saying? I grew up and I was taught that whatever will be, will be. Have you heard that kind of teaching? I was taught that whatever happens, just give thanks and don't ask any question. I was taught that whatever you don't understand, God doesn't want you to understand. If he wants it, he will reveal it to you. So I grew up letting God become absolutely responsible for my life. And it looked very spiritual. Hallelujah. And I found out that my life was like a chess. Anything would just be played left, right, and center. Just like many of our lives. But then I got to understand by revelation and by the ministry of treasures in the body of Christ. How that when it comes to the gospel of the kingdom, it is a gospel of partnership. Many men of God call it covenant. I choose to call it partnership. The reason is because in a covenant, if you break the terms of the contract, you will suffer. But in partnership, your partner can help you even when you default. You see why I choose to call it partnership? I'm not against the concept of covenant, but I, I feel comfortable knowing that I'm in partnership with the Spirit. Because it is possible to be in partnership with someone who is able to cover for your limitations. And that introduces the mercy of God in the equation. But the fact that the mercy of God is available does not mean that I will not play my role. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And week after week, by the grace of God, is that rain? Please come in. Ushers, coordinate them. Let's be very fast. Come in, sit everywhere everywhere please come in come in come in with your chairs as much as possible we apologize it's a rainy season come in just bring them in please let the rain not we already appreciate your commitment 
bring them in their spaces add you can add more seats in front please hallelujah we really apologize we're a very responsible ministry and my heart goes out to all those who do not have seats or those who are outside we really apologize praise god you can add more chairs in front bring them in front don't feel embarrassed relax make yourself very comfortable one of the reasons why men of god do not get blessed and one of the reasons why god does not honor many ministries with people is because they do not know that ministry is all about people hallelujah when you treat people like animals they will not come to your church or to your meeting hallelujah forget the fact that we teach and say okay the holy spirit is this if you like don't come and get blessed by the time you see empty pews again and again you must change your confession we treat people with honor and dignity because the bible says now we do not yet appear we shall, what we shall be like we realize that we are treating men and women of royalty men of dignity only god can tell how far because the word of god that we teach and preach is the incorruptible word of god that is able to make any man become great once again we apologize thank you jesus so tonight i'm teaching on one of those keys again many of us have been receiving these keys again and again please just indicate by way of lifting your hands if you know that you are gaining understanding into the operation of spiritual things let me see your hands that you can like a doctor look at someone's life right now hallelujah come sir can i use you come if this brother comes to us right now and he says i'm being oppressed by demons and powers of darkness i expect anyone who has been faithfully listening to these teachings and even the many thousands and millions online who are following us listen i expect that you should be able to profess solution to this brother hallelujah and that solution is not to take him to joshua selman if you if the solution is to take him to joshua selman then you are not learning enough because the goal is not for one man to stand and become alpha and omega the goal is that by the investments of the word of god in you you are able to have the ability the revelation the faith and the anointing to legislate on behalf of heaven hallelujah so i expect just anybody at all to be able to walk up to this brother and say brother if you are in christ you are seated with christ in heavenly places and although this is true don't feel embarrassed it doesn't mean that because you are going through what you are going through the word of god is a lie i am here as an ambassador to enforce that verdict in your life hallelujah and then you expect the backing of heaven if this brother comes right now and says nothing is working in my life there's no job there's no finance there's no marriage there's no open door i'm a failure all round. i expect any of us to be able to sit with this brother in three days and by the revelation the strategic revelation of the word of god you should be able to bless him listen the knowledge of the word is a gift you can give people hallelujah i can count money my brother even if it is one million naira if i give you it will finish either by carelessness or fruitful use it will still finish are you getting my point now but if i deposit in you notice my choice of words the strategic word of god not just the word of god by his stripes no not by his stripes um tithe give be blessed and so on and so forth that is not strategic you don't teach people that way that's information hallelujah teaching means to bring you into the understanding 
of the operation of kingdom principles that's what it means to understand when you understand the thing you can explain it if it is still vague you only know it you don't understand it the proof that you understand a truth in the kingdom is that you can teach it confidently hallelujah bless you sir thank you tonight i'm sharing very briefly and then we'll pray on a message i titled koinonia ancient secrets to power and relevance koinonia and then colon ancient secrets to power and relevance please listen to this message tonight i truly believe it's very powerful and it will change our lives His grace, your grace, I'm nothing without you. It's grace, your grace, shines on me. It's your grace, your grace, Lord, I'm nothing without you your grace your grace shines on me listen you know why i took this song you know how confident i am about life you cannot imagine it's not arrogance ah look see when you see me teach these truths, the Bible says, I found your word and I did eat them. And they became a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. If I buy shares for you, you may be happy and you may feel secured, right? If I connect you to a rich man, you may be happy and feel secured. If I connect you to an anointed man, you may feel happy and secured but brothers and sisters when you are connected to the revelation of the truths of the kingdom is the ultimate secret for confidence in life absolutely absolutely it's it's like it's like beer that intoxicates until it has become true in your life you may not understand this is why Paul even had to correct himself. He said, we make our boasting, but then he said in the Lord, so that you will not be misunderstood. The word of God gives you such a level of confidence. All of a sudden, when you understand the principles of the kingdom, you will now begin to connect the equations of life. You will now find out that as haphazard as life looks, there is a formula that governs its operation. Are you getting what I'm saying? You will just know that nothing just happens. There is a formula. Listen, when you find it, you have found it. It may, it may cost you to find it. But brothers and sisters, when you find it, it's an asset. You don't need to refrigerate it. I keep saying it. You don't need to keep it with another untrusted person. It's yours. And it's yours for life. Hallelujah. Receive the word. Receive the word. Receive the word. It's your way out of mediocrity in life. It's your way out of irrelevance. I don't know what you may be going through right now. And I don't care how bad things are in your life. I'm telling you the truth. Brothers and sisters, if you receive the word of the kingdom, the strategic understanding of the operation of the kingdom, you are a champion and no power in existence can stop it it's not about prophecy it's not just about laying on of hands it's about coming to a point where you are built by knowledge so when you look at life the thing that makes others panic it no longer makes you panic because you understand the hidden operation of these realities many people just wait for the physical consequences of whatever happens in the spirit and then they try to manage it when it appears physically that's a risky way of living 
Hallelujah. The Bible says, They that know their God. Daniel 11 32, the B part. It said, They shall be strong. And in this life, they will do exploits. There are some of us here who are ministers of the gospel. And we are trusting God to stamp His hand upon our lives. I'm telling you, this is the way it works. There are some of us who are great leaders, corporate leaders, great people in different areas of our lives. There are some of us who have come on behalf of ourselves and the numerous confused people that we have in our lineage. And we know that we are the saviors. If we miss it, there might not be a door of opportunity. But I have good news for you. They said about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? The word of God has equal value to any man. There's no tribalism about the word of God. I hate tribalism. You would have noticed that. I hate tribalism of any sort. Because the word of God places us in the same position. Your only limitation is your degree of persistence and your degree of passion to spiritual things. What the word of God will do to a Hausa man, it will do to a Yoruba man. What the word of God would do to an Igbo person, it would do to a South-South person. What the word of God would do to an illiterate, it will do to a professor. The word of God has equal value. If it is received, believed, and acted upon. This for me is the ultimate representation of God's justice. That God is a just man, truly. Because if the word of God had a way of becoming an advantage unto others by default, then would have said, God, God is playing injustice somewhere. That means the word of God gives me the same opportunity. The same opportunity. The same opportunity. And through the months, the last two, three months, we've been talking about several things. I am very proud of the fact that a majority of the people in this meeting are young people. I'm very proud of it. Years ago, let me tell you something. Years ago, when God started with us and we started this great thing that we see today, a lot of people felt it's just young people. But they have forgotten that the man celebrating 50 years today was once a young man who was misled with wrong information. And he, he confused himself to old age. And so, for me, a man of God said, the Lord told him something. He said, give me the youth and I will give you a new nation. Some of our parents are too old to effect change. They will only leverage on our own transformation. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some of you are in children ministry and when you are talking to the children you just look at them little children hello wake up and see those who were i still remember very vividly when i was very very small if you have forgotten you are really old hallelujah i remember i remember a few commitments that i made in my life to seek god i have no regret because i always say this young people have time but they lack knowledge they are inexperienced they are naive old people don't have time but they have learned the lesson through pain but there's no time to correct it so we have the advantage of knowledge and time and i will get all the knowledge and do great things for the kingdom hallelujah isn't it amazing that some of the truths we are hearing, a number of people here are married, but most of us, many of us here are not married. Is it not a great blessing to know that your children will not eye you one day and say, goodness, what sort of father are you? Or what sort of mother are you? Are you not happy that your generation will look at you and say, we were blessed to have you? Hallelujah. I give God all the glory. I treasure this ministry. I treasure that which God is doing. It is an opportunity to transform lives. I said this thing about five, six years ago. That we are all going to be great. And the great part is we all know one another. 
Yes, we will remember one another. Do not underestimate what the Holy Ghost is doing in the lives of people. This is a renaissance. It's a revolution. It's like the foxes that Samson set on fire and just sent them. There are some of you sitting down here. Even you, you do not know how mighty. Who knows? Maybe there are wives of presidents in this place. What is wrong with that? I love that lady. She lifted her hands and said, Hallelujah. In other words, I'm not sitting in the presence of God for nothing. There are multi billionaire conglomerate owners who are spirit filled. See that? An apostolic, not just wild people advancing hell. They understand strategic kingdom advancement. There are men and women of God who carry anointing in there will be very little competition when we start manifesting because great will be the grace upon us. There will not be need for envying people. We will celebrate one another because we have become colleagues in victory. So I can be invited for a meeting. I may, I may not be able to go. I'll say, sir, please go for me. And I know that Christ will be glorified. It's not about one great MOG. That's why we are pressing. The earth will see wonders. Ah, every man, before he was used of God, he believed he was nothing. But not when God stretches his hands on you, he will make a wonder. Lord, we thank you for what you are doing. I treasure and I appreciate what God is doing in my life. And I'm encouraging you, do not trivialize what God is doing in your life. Not everybody is as yielded as you are. I hope you know that. This is Friday night. There are many disco halls that are open. What's the time? It's the right time when everything is open. And trust me, there are some people sowing to the flesh, making generous investments unto death. But you are here building your spirit. There is the justice system of God. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever, not a preacher, a man sows. Brothers, you are standing now, but you are already sowing for your children. School fees will be paid. You are not even aware when it was paid. That's how blessed it can be. Because you will bless people. Your child will become a millionaire at age five. Not because you did anything. It's a privilege. They will make all your children head boy, head girl. It's not head boy anything. It's just to bring the favor of God to the school. I can imagine how my children will be. You know, I think about this thing. Let me tell you something very humorous. A lady during my birthday, she's here. She bought me baby shoes as birthday gift. And I said, goodness. That's, that's for another day. That's for another day. That's for another day. <laughs> Do you believe in what God is doing in your life? Yeah. That you will end certain cycles. A day will come, your name will become a password to favor for people. That when, when there are barriers and there's nothing to do, they don't need to start shouting Jesus foolishly. They say, I know this gentleman. See, you know him. Are you sure? Please. Ah. May it happen, oh God. May it happen. May it happen. May it happen. Yes, it will happen. So let people laugh at you, no problem. Let them criticize you, no problem. Pay the price now. Sisters, I can guarantee you, you are going to marry very good men. It's a guarantee. You like, don't say amen. I can guarantee you. Don't you think, forget the fact that these brothers are wearing sandals and their jeans are faded. What is in them? He said, though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is being renewed. You hold on. They may not have... Forget about all these men that come with jeeps. You have already seen their future. You don't know the future of these ones. Those of you who are gullible, following every man, calm down. You will see the rising when you see the son of man in power and glory. You will remember. Brothers, take your gari honorably. Give Jesus praise. Because you're already counting days. And same for the brothers. 
I guarantee that you will marry virtuous ladies. Yes. See, the Bible says, he that finds a wife, a, a wife is not the name of a lady. A wife is, is, is a, is a, is, is, is a personal, it's not a personality. It's a, what do I call it? It's an office. You must be a wife before you become found. It's a, he that finds a wife, not he who's finding makes her a wife. That, that's for another day. Ah, some of you are happy. You wish I would just continue. You like this love and relationship thing. We are taking over the mountains. Yes, we are. We are. We are. Say after me, I am great. Please say it with revelation. I am great. This is not just, it's not just those childish confessions. I am great. I am really great. Say I'm influential. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Koinonia, ancient secrets to power and relevance. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Write this word down. The teaching has begun, please. Make sure you have something. Right? You just shouted, I'm great, I'm great. Please write all your phones. If you don't have, don't feel bad. Don't be under pressure. But next time, Please get a notebook, not just a jotter that you bring out from the back of your pocket. Have a very good hardcover note. See this? This means a lot of things about you. It means I am responsible. I mean business about my life. I'm not a joker and I'm going somewhere. When you get a good hardcover notebook, when you slip pieces of paper and with broken virus that are all stained, it tells me the quality of your appreciation for your future. Write this word down. Uncommon. <sighs> Help us, Holy Spirit. I'm sharing something very spiritual and I trust that the power of God will back up the things that we're teaching tonight. Write that word down. Uncommon. Because this is what you are becoming. The word uncommon means to be needed. It means to be needed. It means to be in high demand. To be in high demand. It means to be significant. Are you writing please? It means, I like this one, not easily replaceable. To be uncommon means that you are not easily replaceable it means worthy of honor to be uncommon means that you are worthy of honor it means you are an endangered species it means you are scarce you are highly prized i'm just talking hallelujah the revelation of the word of god is making us uncommon Uncommon means you do not find it anywhere. Uncommon means you don't pick it on the ground. Gold is a treasured metal because you have to dig the earth to find it. No one treasures sand so much because you can bend down and just pick it up. So God is making us uncommon. Pray in one minute before I start teaching. Say, Lord, you are making me uncommon. I receive of that ministry. I receive of that ministry. Pray, you're making me uncommon. I'm becoming uncommon. I'm a joy to my family, to all those around me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The word koinonia, please write it down. The word koinonia means... There are actually seven meanings. It's a Greek word from the text that we just took. The word koinonia. It has seven meanings, but I'll just focus on three of them. Number one, it means communion. The coming together of two people. 
it means intimacy a state of closeness that brings about oneness intimacy and number three it means partnership or joint participation partnership or joint participation i have discovered in my life and i've studied from scripture that this word koinonia enshrined in this word is the revelation that holds the key to true power true anointing many of us when you see a man that is mightily being used by god we say this man is anointed or this is a powerful man of god or this man is full of grace you know and so on and so forth to mean that there is a rich deposit of the ability of the holy spirit in that man's life and tonight i want to show you the secret because there is a secret i call it an ancient secret an ancient secret that is responsible for power genuine authentic power the ancient secret that is responsible for timeless relevance relevance that cuts across dispensations relevant that cuts across age and geographic barriers koinonia that word hmm. every man in scripture we we see when when you read from genesis down to revelation you see that god used all sorts of people he used tamaras he used thieves doubting people temperous people educated people illiterate people so there were all kinds of people with their personality differences and temperaments but one thing happened to them all they had encounters and they came into this mystery called koinonia and that was the secret of the rich deposit of the spirit in their lives and it made them relevant through the dispensation of their generations and some of them were even referred to in dispensations that were not their own for instance abraham we make reference to him transgenerational relevance koinonia everybody say koinonia there is a state of intimacy and fellowship that you have with the holy spirit that will translate into the anointing of the spirit working in your life and tonight i'm going to guide us very briefly into it and then we'll pray there is something that you can know you know through the past months we've been exploring the concept of relevance success impact and all of that because it is very important it's not only enough for us to explore prayer spiritual things the gifts of the spirit you know and so on and so forth it, many of us will be consoled our christian experience will comfort us when we begin to learn the principles that make us relevant hallelujah koinonia that secret that the ancient knew right now we teach all kinds of formulas and i love principles we teach methods of getting the anointing i've, I've read a lot of books especially in recent times there are all kinds of books and all kinds of things that attempt to teach people on the anointing and i'm telling you unfortunately many of these people that write these books have not demonstrated the reality of the anointing in their lives and so they have written theological dissertations about the anointing and the workings of the anointing and the way it translates into making a man relevant and many people have applied these principles right now we 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 think the anointing is something or the power of the holy spirit is just a formula do a do b and then automatically it will happen no no you are dealing with somebody you are dealing with a personality you are not dealing with an animal you're not dealing with an object you're not dealing with a machine you are dealing with a real person who has emotions a real person who has a who can you can have fellowship with and if you do not understand koinonia then you may never taste kingdom relevance in your lifetime hallelujah fellowship the fellowship of the spirit 
here paul begins to speak in in second corinthians he said the grace of our lord jesus christ that grace is also the love of god and it says the fellowship of the spirit the fellowship the constant coming together the joint participation between you and the spirit let it remain with you i hope you know that the corinthian church were a powerful church it was it was in first corinthians 12 down to 14 that paul began to talk to the corinthian church because they were walking mightily in the gifts of the spirit they were moving in spiritual things paul even had to talk to them and in first corinthians 14 verse 40 he said let all things be done decently and in order he had to come in and bring order because the demonstration of the spirit upon their life was so rich it was creating chaos and the secret he encourages them to keep doing what they had been doing that brought the glory and the power of god and he said the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship do not ignore fellowship with the Holy Spirit, he was telling them. Make sure that you do not get too busy in life and in ministry. Make sure you do not become so much of a, a, a minister, a preacher, a celebrity, that you forget the fellowship of the Spirit. Because your relevance is tied to it. This is what Paul was trying to let the Corinthian church know that the fellowship of the spirit be let it remain let it not become an occasional thing because the church was getting famous they were doing great things they were getting busy just like many of us are becoming busy let me tell you something with people when they start out with god because there are no invitations permit my bias i'm talking about ministers but it applies to every area of our lives as a minister when you're starting out no one knows you there's no ministry there's no invitation no grace speaking so it is easy to stay in the place of fellowship and i'll share a few components of that you know you stay you experience that koinonia you can dedicate a whole day a whole week but then something happens when you start becoming busy there are all kinds of ministrations here and there you have invitations and you have to even select which one to go and which one not to go at that point the the grace and the impetus to continue koinonia is affected because right now there is nothing to lose even if you stay for one month and you don't read anything there are tapes that have recorded the workings of god in your life and those tapes will open doors of ministration when you stand there will always be something to share and god cannot deny himself so you will still see the grace of god here and there in your meeting and then many people become stunted and many people even lose relevance i preach the message and you can get the teaching the secret of sustained glory i think it's a preparatory message to what i'm sharing tonight and if you don't have it you can get it from the media it's free the secret of sustained glory the secret of transgenerational relevance i don't want to be a man of god who will be relevant for four or five months and then one day they'll say ah i remember we used to know this guy oh he loved god i don't know what happened but it has happened there are so many people like that in this country there are men who were relevant in certain seasons they carried the banner of spiritual things they pioneered certain great things but right now their voices are silent i want to tell you something when you lose the fellowship of the spirit you have lost the place of spiritual power and you have lost the place of relevance when you lose koinonia when this word becomes foreign in your life and through your your words you cannot mention that word frequently again i'm assuring you you have lost spiritual power everybody say koinonia say fellowship that fellowship of the spirit the psalmist understood this and he said cast me not away from your presence he said take not your spirit from me it was the holy ghost that took me it was koinonia that took me from a shepherd boy to become a king 
over the nation of Israel. And he said, oh Lord, cast me not. It's because of the presence of the Holy Spirit and this participation is because of my joint partnership that I've written so many songs. I've written so many hymns that I am considered to be a great king because of one that works together with me. And he says, oh Lord, cast me not away. Let nothing happen in my life and in executing my work that makes you cast me from your presence because at that point, I will begin to lose relevance. Hallelujah. This happened to his son called Solomon. Solomon, theologically speaking, wrote the book of Ecclesiastes in his fallen state. Hallelujah. That's why he wrote all sorts of things. Vanity upon vanity, he was angry. All his vanity. He was communicating frustration because he had done all sorts of things. The man who saw the manifest presence of God twice, it was Solomon who prayed at the dedication of the temple. He said, now arise, O God, and come to your resting place. It was Solomon. Now Solomon had lost the place of koinonia, and he began to lose relevance. And he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, advising people and communicating his frustration. He said, I gave myself to everything. Everything my eyes saw that I wanted, I got. No restraint. Because you see, the place of intimacy is the place of pruning. It's where God creates boundaries in your life. It's where God builds you. And as you're moving, prosperity, influence gives you options. It enlarges your coast. And it takes you returning to the spirit so that he will set boundaries. Otherwise, you will break boundaries until you lose relevance. Hallelujah. It is the absence of koinonia, listen to me, that can make a man of God begin to walk and live very well and do great things. And when he finds out that God has blessed him with a large congregation made up of all kinds of pretty ladies, lack of koinonia, a visitation and a sustaining um, remaining in the secret place that can make him compromise on the secrets and the principles that sustain the anointing until there are all kinds of, of trouble in his life all sorts of things here and there disturbing a man of God's wife sleeping with somebody who came for counseling I'm not castigating people the mercy of God is still there but I'm just telling us it can be prevented are you getting my point now you can, you can prevent it it can be prevented sorry you don't have to wait until you pass through it and then try to manage it. There's a great man of God. I honor the man so much. He has a television ministry. He was a great evangelist, mighty evangelist. Then, if there was a little scandal, not now that a man of God can even come on stage and say, I'm gay, and then nothing happens. Congregation doesn't change. Then, no matter how little the scandal was, you've lost your ministry. A great man of God by the name Jimmy Swaggart. This man did mighty things. He was in the class of Benny Hinn and Reinhard Bonke and all these men of God. Mighty man. But just a little scandal. Just dropped him down. And he's risen back today. He's doing great things. But he may never be like before again. Hallelujah. A man of God who starts in the secret. And now becomes and all that he's obsessed about is cars. He, he can sit down browsing all through the night. All sorts of cars because it's just to make the order. And in six weeks he's, he's in his garage. Lost without restraint. Everybody say koinonia. The secret of true spiritual power. I'm teaching us this because it is important that we become relevant. What are the components of true fellowship with the Holy Spirit? What must happen in your life for us to really say you're fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit? What does it entail? Koinonia is not just a vague thing. It's, it's something that is, is, you can describe the activities that happen in that secret place. Number one. Or before we even talk about them, let me just tell you something. If you want to enjoy intimacy with the Holy Spirit, the first thing is that you must recognize and respect His ministry in your life. You must respect 
his relevance in your life. This is very important. Very, very important. I can never be close to you if you do not communicate to me that I am needed in your life. Is that true? How many of you have found yourself restraining yourself from certain people and friends because they act every time you are around as though you are a you are a what you are a pest is that true have you seen people like that even when there is fire falling on their head you say let it fall the last time i went there they treated me like a dog can i tell you something the holy spirit is god make sure you write it the holy spirit is not an archangel the holy spirit is not the first man the holy spirit is god in all the fullness so you must be able to respect and be prepared to receive his ministry i learned that from benny Hinn. till today when benny Hinn stands upon his crusade stage with hundreds and of thousands of people and millions of people he gives acknowledgement you know what it means to acknowledge a man go for occasions and you find out that if there are dignitaries seated around they don't start the occasion proper until you acknowledge them in our midst here is so 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 and so and then they say a little bit about the man he was able to do this and while they are doing that the man is excited he's happy and there are ushers already standing close to him say ladies and gentlemen please make welcome this and that and his lovely wife and two of them try to pretend i don't want to go and they say please sir we must we love you too much this seat was made for you and you are acknowledging them and the amount the man did not plan to give he will give it because he was acknowledged the bible says in all your ways acknowledge it didn't say talk to him many of us talk to god but we don't acknowledge him hallelujah do you respect the holy spirit or do you just believe in him i respect his ministry there is an invisible person brothers and sisters that stands close to me take that person away from me two weeks two weeks joshua selman is dead people will keep asking what happened maybe he has gone to babala or maybe the charm was not renewed everything has backfired the presence of the spirit i'm not embarrassed listen and let me use this to teach you the secret of friendship for many of you everybody you come close to runs away from you let me tell you what is wrong now it's not necessarily demon it's because your life creates a picture that trivializes the importance of people in your life the bible says he who wants friends must first show himself friendly if i come to your room and you are frowning because you want to put food and i'm full it's not even that i want to eat but the way you are frowning you are creating a body language that tells me you self now for you you know you think i'll come there again but when i come and you celebrate me you show genuinely from your heart that if i were to come hundred times you will still receive me a time will come when i will make my habitation in your house there that's what happened to the prophet remember the prophet and the shunammite woman every time he passed when the woman saw him she she made table she studied the things that he liked she put a table for him because she noticed he was always receiving from god and writing and the prophet was so amazed a time came when she even created a room for him and she was blessed do you make room for the spirit you get up in the morning you get up in a whole week and you don't care about him you don't talk to him and then sometimes we come for koinonia and people just tell a lot of lies. You are the love of my life. Ha, love of your life. Of your life. Not even of your day, of your life. I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold. I was teaching in a ministry and I said, hold on. Do you know what silver and gold is? Silver and gold can change your life and your family. wouldn't trade you for riches untold you are you are my heir. as a lady when you are singing your husband will just be looking at you you are my everything okay and now see the reason why you don't cook for me again you are not faithful can you 
give the Holy Spirit your all. Can you let him know that I have no ministry without you? This is what I tell him in the secret place. I say, Lord, people love me today because you love me. If I reject you, that's the same thing that will happen. My life is a reflection of the honor I give to him. Every time I honor him, I find out that people honor me. Every time I find out that my honor for him is dwindling, I see it happen in my life and I run for a retreat quickly. Hallelujah. When you dishonor the Holy Spirit, your life will reflect that dishonor. Because the glory that keeps you honorable fades away. Hallelujah. See, I respect the Spirit of God. Yes, I do. I do. I respect Him. I honor Him. I don't just believe in Him. I've had the opportunity to preach in crusades and meetings and conferences and so many meetings. I'm week after week, I'm traveling from end to end of this nation, preaching and doing mighty things for the kingdom. And in every one of these meetings, he has not left me without a witness. How could I reject him? Everyone, people send me text messages. They say a lot of things. Joshua Selman, thank you. Your messages are changing lives. Your messages are doing this and that. And in my mind, I say, our message, Holy Spirit. They just don't know. You know that song? Uh, what's it? They don't know what you mean to me. They don't know what you mean to me. Listen, if someone has volunteered to pay your school fees, the day you hear the person is sick with a terminal disease, what will you do? You will run like your life depends on it. Your school fees is at stake. Is that true? The Holy Spirit is the key to my relevance. If people ever clap for me, it's because of Him. So as they clap for me, I only become an usher. And I say, Holy Spirit, you are the one who deserves it. When I stand and I speak, I don't have the ability to be everywhere at the same time. But as I speak, he's the one who touches people. His power. He makes his power manifest. He's the force behind the messages of this ministry. That you hear and it does something to you you cannot explain. How could I ignore him? How could I ignore him? Based on what? What you see in my life is a reflection of his glory. If you ignore the Holy Spirit, you have ignored beauty and glory from your life. If you have ignored the Holy Spirit, listen, God is speaking to us here. We started last week. Many of us have truly ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Koinonia. Many of us have become so busy. You have become a business mogul now. You have partners in Abuja and and lagos and abroad and china you are now a great man you are now a five pointer you nail it at will there's no need for the holy spirit again you are now married no need for crying or dropping any prayer request for life partner and there's no reason to seek him again we must get to that point where we create a secret place every time i listen to mike mudok he takes time to honor the Holy Spirit. And he does it generously from the depths of his heart. Ladies, imagine how your husband will feel when you come up and before you preach. You take 10 quality minutes and you just shower honor. You say, I'm a queen because he's a king. Hey. I'm married because he married me. The man is there managing all of the blessings that are coming. As soon as you finish, that car that you wanted to buy, you say, um, honey, what did you even say you wanted? Listen, many, um, I see, it looks like I'm using everyday joke, but I'm telling you, this is the secret. And can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? The reason why many people are disgraced in public is because they embarrass the Holy Spirit in secret. 
if you honor him in secret he will never forget you in public many people come on stage the power of god is going to move i came all the way to let you see what god will do and we chorus all sorts of things and get angry at the people you don't have faith open now receive what we are meaning is try you know all sorts of things we lay hands on people twisting their head up and down and they say ah let me just fall this man will kill me brothers and sisters the absence of intimacy is always clear you can't fake it hallelujah every time hold this mic you hear the voice of two people it's just that it has been woven into one that's the reason why i can be talking to you outside you see that generally but once it is time to come into that office that releases our oneness you will hear another voice hmm. so every time you come to touch me you are touching two people joshua selman is a man but there is the holy spirit standing behind Hiya. when it's time to lay hands on the sick he tells me remember we're in the secret place remember the things that i taught you and so together we lay that hand and while my hand is there's, there's nothing to it but when his hand comes upon your hand hi, suddenly it, it happens as if you are playing but then it's as real as anything sister when the holy ghost comes upon your life he amplifies your beauty there is a level of beauty that people they know there is something about you it's not like you are the finest lady everywhere but they are seeing the beauty that it that is interfacing both the physical and the spirit realm the brother talks to you and he cannot sleep again he knows he spoke to two people hallelujah and so you greet someone and you tell the person god bless you and that word comes with an anointing because there is another personality say i am never alone say it again i am never alone there is a personality that walks with me that talks with me see if you carry this mindset if you carry this mindset it will change your life oh i'm never alone he said yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil why for thou art with me for you are with me when i go for meetings and i see sick people and i see hungry people hungry for the things of god and i see stubborn people there are people that when you see in a meeting if the holy ghost is not with you start crying because you say in jesus name they are not even answering amen you see you they are as complicated as whatever you know you are in for a surprise it's at that time you can lean on the strength of one who is greater than you and you know that the holy spirit is going to do something in their lives and someone sometimes when i see people who come for koinonia you know when i follow the the, the pictures you see the person who came you know that someone brought him because he's even surprised he's just standing outside and wondering and you know this person does not even know why he came the ability of the spirit have you ignored the ministry of the holy spirit in your life this has nothing to do with just ministry it has to do with every area of your life so you must respect his ministry the holy ghost is a gentle man the limit to which you allow him to come into your life is the limit to which he remains. Revelation 3.20. Let's hurry up. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy, potent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Let's sing it one more time. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. 
this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy, potent Father of mercy and grace, thou art welcome in this place. Listen, it says, Behold, I stand. He was writing to the seven churches, they were already saved. This is not a scripture for sinners. He was writing to the seven churches in Asia Minor. But he said, Behold, I stand. Like a guy comes to propose to a lady. You can't just grab a lady and say, You are my wife. Forget about those things they used to do before. You are my wife. And you... No, behold, I come and I stand. I seek intimacy. I seek intimacy. But I will not bump into your life because you have a will. You can choose to reject me and I will go. Are you getting my point now? He said, behold, I stand. As mighty as I am, I am able to change your life. But I stand. He says, and I knock. If any man hear my voice, that means you can be so distracted, you do not even hear his voice. But if for any reason you hear my voice, and what? Open the door. What does it mean to open the door? Receive my ministry consider it that i am relevant enough consider it that without me you will lose relevance without me there's no spiritual power without me you will struggle that i am able to bring beauty and glory out of your life out of your church out of your fellowship consider it that you don't need to relocate what you need is not to come closer to the people jesus was on the mountain crowds came in the desert crowds came all these excuses we give there are various ways of explaining the consequences of the absence of koinonia if my church was in abuja people would have come i know that if i had money i would have paid for everything i would have done beautiful backdrop it's a lie it's a lie there is a presence that draws people it's called anakazo it's a compelling power of the spirit believe what i'm telling you no human being can resist it no matter how stubborn you are listen this is the power that created the heavens and the earth this is the power that raised christ from the dead oh no you are too small to resist it when the ministry of the holy spirit is allowed and permitted in a church in a building you will see supernatural things that will amaze you the reason why things look very difficult in churches and ministries is because we have boxed the holy spirit we are embarrassed to tell the people that he is greater than us we are threatened like two business partners who have begun to fight themselves young gicho wrote a book the secret of his building the 700,000 city in show he wrote that book i read that book years ago holy spirit my senior partner he wrote another book the fourth dimension there is more to this man you see i'm not so smart in myself come on now ah. but there is one who can bring beauty and glory out of your life but he's standing tonight listen he's knocking You've struggled all your life to be relevant. Man of God, you have struggled. You've told lies with miracles that didn't happen because of the absence of his presence. And he's saying there is no need. You can get into the real thing. You have exaggerated the number of your church members because you are embarrassed. You have said all kinds of things competing with people. He's saying there is no need. I can give you something authentic. Sister, you have envied everybody you can see. And the Holy Spirit is saying there's no need. There is beauty and glory. Ah, yeah. He's called the Spirit of glory. He does something to you. Do you know that the Holy Spirit can alter your physical form? Your physical, biological form. There is, there is, there is a depth. 
how many of you have seen a man who gets married to his wife and after four or five years they start looking like one another is that true it even happens to some even from relationship before they get married you say ah oh boy when did you start becoming fair say, that's none of your business oneness participation how many of you have seen pastors of certain ministries look like their ministers and you know they did not try to cook it up something happened it looks like their physical appearance were altered that's what happened to the apostles in acts the book of acts they looked like jesus that's what happened to peter when they saw peter they said no peter your talk betrays you it tells you you have been peter said woman me i've not been with jesus but he had been so into oneness that even when he wanted to run away he could not he had taken up the language the character let me tell you something about oneness with the spirit let's see my dear when you become one with the holy spirit see when a spirit comes to walk with a man the spirit begins to live out its characteristics through that man just like a demon spirit right there was a spirit and it was the posture of that spirit the woman who was bound for 18 years as you when you are praying for people and you know during deliverance sessions you see people acting like animals and acting like snakes because the spirit that oppresses them is trying to manifest its characteristic through their faculties so when you walk with the spirit without struggle that is the real revelation of grace you start seeing the love of god at work in you are you seeing the point now there are times that the holy spirit is grieved about certain things and you start crying physically because you are now you have there is a sharing together he can pour into you his burden hallelujah there are times that the holy ghost is excited so you are praying in tongues we we'll talk about that you are praying in the secret place and the holy spirit sees that you have entered the realm of victory you cannot see it and he starts rejoicing and you start laughing you see now you have not seen it but because you are one he starts letting you share in the victory that's why when a sick body is healed the holy ghost doesn't just appear and say all right stand let me shine congregation i am the one you are the only one who is left that is your own benefit of coming into oneness and so people look and your face are on posters and billboards and people say this is the great man and you who because you have wisdom you run back and say spirit of god i'm not foolish we are together it's the biggest secret that i've learned the ministry of the holy spirit let everything in my life give way if you leave me with the holy spirit you have not done anything to me hallelujah a great man of god apostle johnson suleiman i've shared the story here i'll share it again he was praying at a particular point and a great politician came to see him very noble man and so when he came one hour the man of god was still praying two hours he was just in the room three hours the wife got a bit embarrassed his daughter got a bit embarrassed and she went to knock and then he opened the door and she entered and she was like daddy this man Abba, attend to him let him go and he looked at her he said my daughter sit down he said you know why this man is here he's here because of my relationship with the holy spirit if i leave my relationship with the holy spirit because of him he will never return again let him wait there are many of us as koinonia is like this when we see certain dignified people we cannot worship in the presence of god because we're embarrassed the one who makes the world clap for you if you run away from him now are you not foolish because they will not clap again the one who has made you a celebrity the one who took you from the wilderness some of us we know where we are coming from hallelujah look how he's brought beauty and glory out of your life i love you forever i love you forever i love you forever lord See, my mom sent me a text my mom sent me a text that blessed me so much you know what she told me in the text um, she's with her husband in Lagos and they sent me a text her now she said 
she calls me her father so she said my father make sure you don't buy a car with tinted glasses because police people will disturb you i hope you take note of that bless you or love you or whatever it is i said ah you know what it means for a mother to be so confident that her son is a success she knows that if i'm not going to go and carry any kind of thing and manage she's advising me in advance she said buy a, don't buy a car with tinted glass that's a level of trust and confidence are you getting my point can that be your testimony can your father look at you and say son i know you will build a house for me please when you are building it can you make the kitchen a bit larger and he knows you are not going to say are you joking one plot of land no hallelujah i remember years ago someone met me and we we're talking about purpose and destiny a good friend of mine and he told me something he said sir i'm more confident about your life than i am about my own life it's not he's not in so he's just saying when i look at you i can guarantee that you will be a success even more than i can guarantee my own success and i told him change it change it there is a revelation you can have john 14 17 john 14 17 everyone say after me holy spirit i open up myself say it seriously holy spirit I open up myself to the fullness of your ministry to the multifaceted dimensions of your ministry he said even the spirit of truth he said the world cannot do what that means there are people who do not receive this spirit the world cannot receive him because it's yet him not neither knoweth him he said for you but you know him for he dwelleth with you and he shall be in you alos paracletos the helper when the holy ghost comes into your life he helps you there are things he does not do for you but he assists you let's rush what are the components of true fellowship number one the study of the word the study of the word these are the things you do in that secret place. The components that make up true fellowship, koinonia with the spirit. Number one, the study of the word. If you claim you are in intimacy with the Holy Spirit and you don't at least have a commitment, if, even if you don't have a desire, you must have a commitment. Because there are times you may not have a desire, but you must have the commitment. Are you getting my point? Mm. There are times, listen, there are times you may not have the desire to study. Just like there are times you may not have desire to go to work or go to class. But you have the commitment. Praise God. What is the relevance of studying the word? It gives us an understanding of the ways of God. It gives us an understanding of the ways of God. The thoughts of God. And the mindset of God. We must study the word of God. Contained in this book. Listen. When you listen to my teachings. Or you read my books for instance. In that book is a communication of my persuasions. Is that true? A book is simply a documentation of persuasions. When I'm persuaded about a philosophy. Or an idea. Or a pattern of thought. I document it. So when you study my books. It is possible to begin to think like me even without seeing me because you've explored my material so much you have submitted yourself to my thinking pattern and that's what leadership is all about influencing people to come to a point where they adopt your value system by using influence and not force saddam hussein and all of these people adolf hitler they were bad leaders because they caused people to adopt their ideology by using force and cruelty. But look at Jesus. He made his life a template of his ideology so that when we saw it, we would be able to align to it. Are you getting my point? The word of God, the, the Greek word for word there is logos. And, and it's translated thoughts. The thoughts of a man. Printed. 
the thoughts, the thinking pattern of a man. And Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 says this. He said, let this mind, let this mindset, let this ideology, let this frame of work, this plane of judgment, let it be in you which was also in Christ. And the word Christ is Christos, the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Let this mind be in you. That means there is a mindset. Everybody say mindset. Everybody say programming. The word of God does something to you. I've shared this. If I, if I pick, come my dear. You are a microbiology, right? Biochemistry. This is a biochemist, for instance. Watch this. Some years ago, this lady came not knowing anything about biochemistry. Is that true? But there was a curriculum, is that true? That had been created with the goal of transforming her. Did they change her body? Did they injure her? They just passed her to a system for a period of time. And the lecturers looked at her and felt she was qualified to be awarded a degree. So the word of God is a school of training you where you interact with his thinking pattern. It's not a devotional to make you feel spiritual. The word of God is his thought, his mindset, his ideology. Bless you, my dear. So all the while you've been taught all your life that if you want to be rich, money doesn't grow on trees. Hoard as much as you can hoard. Cheat everybody. Kill if it's possible. But then when you explore the mind of God, the constitution that governs the operation of the kingdom, you will find out that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Now you are in conflict. There are two mindsets. Are you getting my point now? And when you submit to the word of God, you have permitted. The word let means permit. Permit this mind. Hallelujah. So culturally, you have been taught that when you envy people and fight with people, then you become the big boss. Ah! And then you come and you study that when you come into Christ, there is a new law. There is a new operation of love that works in you. Hallelujah. Everybody say the word of God reveals to me God's ideologies, God's perspective, and then it also reveals to you God's opinion about every matter. There are many opinions, brothers and sisters. The word of God reveals to you God's opinion. I'll be chipping a lot of things to bless us. Come, share you. Listen. If I want to marry this lady now, I don't need to go and meet a devil like many of us go around scouting for everybody and they just say just tell me uh -uh. the word of god it, as a young man you want to get married are you getting my point now culturally you are taught just go to the village carry anybody that is available save johnny flog it out in the marriage yeah after all you are the man eventually you will survive two of you will be f tired of fighting and you will now sit down on the round table to discuss how to move your home forward that's a cultural way but according to scripture number one you know that it's god's will for you to marry male and female he created them not two males not two females male and female so it is very clear that you have god did not create a man and a will so if you find out that you're having desire for fish to marry you know that you need to run for miracle service there's something wrong but listen listen i'm teaching you how to adopt the mind of god see that if you find out you're having a desire for another man or another lady, you know that you need help. Quick. Quick. Either a retreat or prayer. Anyone. You need it quick. Now watch this. I'm showing you how the mindset of God affects you. Right? When you now go to study the Bible. I'm reading now as a gentleman who wants to settle down. And the Bible says, for this cause shall a man, not a boy. So the first question is what makes a man? I'm showing you how to study and meditate upon the word of God. And he said, shall a man leave his father and mother? That means he must be independent. And there are several things that bring for independent responsibility. Some level of financial security. Some level of mental stability. Are you seeing how I'm building on God's mindset? Leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Not his wife and other concubines. His wife. 
right and they too shall become what one flesh automatically it tells me that the lady i'm going to marry is not a house girl it's not a kicking machine to beat her up every time a business deal doesn't go well are you getting my point now and then i study from god's word he said children are a heritage from the lord not a product of a man and a woman they are heritage from the lord so i bend to the mindset of god whereas i'm the kind of person that claims i'm a hot guy yo i can never do this all this nonsense that we carry from different cultures and you now come i'm this in our village ladies kneel down and lie down and lick our leg in our village when ladies cook soup is in one plate food is in one plate you now submit to the word of god you either choose to carry your village to your destiny or drop it and pick up the mindset choose it this day the bible says that means you can choose are you getting my point now and i say lady when you make up your mind and say no me i'm not going to do anything no any man that i will give it to him i'm not i'm not cooking for any man i'm this and that we are women i'm independent i have my own rights too then you read wives you first ask yourself am i a wife with this noise i'm making you see that because if you are not a wife he was not talking to you you can continue doing what you are doing but if you are a wife the bible says submit to your husbands in everything everything it did not leave you with a choice this is the law of the kingdom and so you now bring yourself and say well talk god this is how you have made it i subscribe to your government hallelujah so if you're one who is lazy and not given to prayer and you find out the bible says luke 18 verse 1 he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint automatically you know that you will submit the goal of studying the word is not to give yourself head knowledge that puffs up every time you study the word find the principles of the kingdom the next thing is submit to their operations bless you man you see the reason why our study of the word does not profit us most of the time because the truth is many of us use devotionals we use books but when we study the word of god we do not submit number one many of us study and argue it when you just study you see something that stings your ego and you just jump it say kite i don't like this this book of colossians let me let me go to something else What is my confidence? What, what assurance do I have that I'm submitting to a mindset that will not disappoint me? He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He said, they are thoughts of good. You see the word thoughts again? My mindset towards you. This mindset that I propose to you. Like a man comes to meet a lady and says, look, I will take care of you. If you go with me in this journey, forget about what you see now. We are soaking Gary, but at the, the end is peace. That's what God is doing with his word. Right? He's bringing you a proposal. And he's saying, look, look, look how your mindset has made your life. The quality of your life so far is a product of your ideologies. Can you bend and let me propose this mindset i know this the thoughts that i think towards you they are thoughts that will bring you good thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end hallelujah everybody say the study of the word when you study the word you understand the ways of god and when you understand the ways of god you will easily be able to detect error are you getting my point so when you see an operation that looks like god but does not line up with the value system and the ideologies of the kingdom although it looks spiritual you can judge it by the authority of the word are you getting my point now Number two, ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come in open hearts, 
study my Bible as if I'm doing a Bible quiz or competition. Many of us believe in our minds we are used to competitions. So when you start studying, you now come and meet your friend and say, I finished Colossians today. I was just going through it. I even started Ephesians. How has it changed your life? Who cares? Who cares whether you read the book? No. Listen, don't be under pressure. It is not spirituality to say I finished my Bible 20 times. If we cannot see the fruit in your life, it's like saying, I know Jonathan. Every day you are telling us you know Jonathan, and we are still the same level. We say, Oh God, you are lying somewhere. Oh. You are lying somewhere. Because we know the way even Jonathan's houseboy is. You are shouting every time. Jonathan is my, my, my father's brother. If not because of situation, I would have grown in his house. You are telling at a point in time. Will know that you are telling a lie. That's how it is. So every time if you speak, I'm a word addict. I'm studying the word. Yet we are not seeing your life. You are the first to get angry. You are the first to slap people. You are the first to insult people. You are the first to use words that are not cultured by the spirit. We know you have not been with God. There is an absence of koinonia. Listen. There are parameters that can measure if the word of God is growing in you. The measure of the word of God in you is the measure of the lordship of Christ in your life. Are you getting my point? He said, my little children in whom I travail until Christ be formed. So I see the degree to which you have submitted to the word of God. That is the degree to which Jesus has become Lord in your life experientially. Hallelujah. Take your time and study the word of God. Listen, you must be strategic about your studying the word of God. Every day we have devotionals to help us here. But you don't have all the time to study the word of God for 8 hours every day. That's not how to grow. That's a religious way. There are many of us that put ourselves under unnecessary pressure. I don't study the word of God like that. Every day I look at, there are times I get up in the morning, there's no time for anything. I have so much activities. But I dedicate periodic times when I stay with the word of God intentionally for the purpose of discovering the gems and the treasure in the word and applying it in my life. How have you been studying your word? So that you can quote. Some of us even have some Bible memory aids that help us. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who threatened me. Uh, this and that and that. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Jeremiah chapter this and that. Da, 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 da. And people say, whoa, whoa, your life is not changing. You are quoting dangerous scriptural principles that have changed the lives of ancient men. But because this thing was not done for the purpose of intimacy, it was simply done to find relevance outside of the spirit. I'm not against Bible recitation. If you stay with a man so much, you should be able to know his words. Your word have I hidden in my heart. The Bible says that I may not sin against you. How shall a young man keep his way pure? Not by trying to run away from iniquity. He said, but by meditating. By meditating. By meditating. So my value systems change. Hallelujah. Number two. The components that make for true intimacy, true fellowship. Number two is a life of praise and worship. Praise and worship. What does praise and worship do? It creates the atmosphere for the spirit of God to manifest himself and to commune with you. The Holy Ghost does not show up everywhere. His manifest presence, his omnipresence. The ability to be everywhere is there. Where can I hide from your presence? The psalmist says. But he's manifest his revealed presence. That he reveals himself for the purpose of communion. It doesn't happen everywhere. Look at me. Have you seen two people in a relationship? When it's evening and they want to really sit down and talk. Does the guy just look and tell the lady to sit down? And then him too, he just sits down in the middle of a junction. That was your day. What do you think the lady would do? The lady will say, this is a picture of many things to come. I'm plotting this graph and it's not heading up to your tent, O ye Israel. You see that? 
there is always a preparation because this guy loves this lady or he's trying to win her heart he would dress the place he will arrange it if she likes red flowers somebody that you know has no business with red will go out of his way buy red buy anything that looks like red it may be even the ox blood to him is red at least he tried he will bring it and arrange something and says i did this for you i prepared this place this is your own place sit down many of us do not know that there is a geography where god meets with men you can set up an altar a meeting place solomon dedicated a place in the temple and he said oh lord let this be your resting place wherever people are if they turn to jerusalem and pray hearken to them hallelujah you can make your house or your room an altar there are people here in this church building you see them in the night they come some of them pray there are some of us our rooms there are some of us certain places some toilets some garages it doesn't matter where people just lock themselves somewhere and just say lord i have come to fellowship and you just sing songs of worship i love you lord and i lift my hands that's fellowship koinonia to worship you and you're luring him with your worship because he cannot resist worship oh my soul rejoice take joy my king and your phone is ringing and you leave it there it's the guy that says you should send your bank account and you leave it there in what you hear the devil is saying, keep singing. You will finish singing and eat your fingers. Let it be a sweet. And he's watching. He's watching. He's seeing the way other things do not mean nothing in his presence. Priority. Sister, you are just singing, I love you, Lord. And Prince Charming is flashing. Ha! Your body. Abel wants to worship. Cain is saying, you better call now that things are working for you. You have been praying and submitting prayer requests. This guy is already being nice now. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Anything you love above the secret place is an idol. I don't care what it is. Abraham took his son son i love you but before you came i was in love with another and not your presence will kill that love he dropped that boy and lifted the knife the reason why many of us may never encounter certain dimensions of glorious things is because god tested you with that thing and his presence and you gave up his presence for it is the same thing as trading your birthright for a pot of soup soup that you eat and three hours later you are hungry hallelujah when I'm spending time with God let the whole world catch fire let it catch fire it's amazing how the devil can create so much distractions there are some of us who when we come to the presence of God that's the time to ping you just see a lady's hair say that's the hair I've been talking to you about let me snap it quickly and you become a commentator on whatsapp and what they call it all those things and the devil knows when to disturb you he waits until it's time for the presence it's time for you to fellowship with the spirit he now brings up all sorts of things psalm 100 verse 2 says come before him with singing that is the protocol of his presence sing to the spirit many of you don't sing every man that moves in the anointing is a man of worship it's a secret of the anointing that's why you see us take our time that's why you see these people standing you don't want to imagine the sacrifice that they spend i'm on stage and they're on stage with me even if it's for 10 hours and the keyboard is playing why because he's worshiping we are creating the atmosphere he said i will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp the prophet knew this and so he said bring me a mistrial i need i cannot talk i need to bring because the holy spirit was not resident in them he would come and he said there is a technology in the spirit that invokes his presence 
That's what we do during our traditional festivals. You see some people who just tie some things around and they come and they are dancing and singing for hours like fools. And when the spirit they are calling finally arrives, you will know it has arrived. Confusion, accidents, all sorts of things. Registering his presence. I'm here. You ask for it. In India, many of you have watched them. They blow flutes and they sing and those serpents begin to come out. And people come to watch. Music is a law of spiritual operation. It's not just a principle. That's why when you listen to all these classical musics, orchestras, you know, and, and all this contemporary worship, they do something to your spirit. I have a bad voice, so what? You are not presenting a special number. It's called the secret place. Even if you are not called into the ministry of worship, God is not complaining. He loves it the way it is. Sing any song. Compose your own song. Hallelujah. Have you seen a lady in love and the guy said, I want to sing for you because his friend said, that's what I did. And the guy is not a good musician. He doesn't even know that the key he's taking is not even the key of the right song. He's mixing words. He's just singing all sorts of songs. And because the lady loves, she's saying, wow, you mean you learned this song today? And the guy is saying, you cannot imagine the days of rehearsal. And he's making all sorts of mistakes. Listen, I'm showing you something about some of you. It has happened to you. That's why you are laughing. You are seeing how this guy is doing his best. He's even closing his eyes. He's communicating his passion. On a very good day, you'd have gotten up to work, but you appreciate that's how the Holy Ghost is. He's not complaining. He's not complaining. We can tell you here that your voice is not good, but when you are in the sea, go off key, go up, go down, sing bass, sing anything. It's you and him. It's called koinonia. There are not many people invited. He, not them that dwell in the secret place. The secret place is not a congregation. It's a place where you meet. It's a love affair. It's an intercourse. It's called koinonia. Dance with me. Remember our song? Lover of my soul To the song of all songs This is to the Holy Spirit Would you dance with me Oh, lover of my soul to the song of all songs let's sing one more time i'm making you fall in love with him dance with me your lover of my soul to the song of all songs listen 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 and while you are singing this song suddenly his shekinah fills the room you know he's in that place i mean your whole body is shaking this guy is responding your your love song is attracting him and you're just shaking and you're wondering scriptures are just coming in your mind and as that is happening god is talking to people bless him bless her favor him all that is happening in the secret place there are sicknesses and challenges there are burdens that you have and you take to the secret place and you're saying oh lord about this cgpa i just saw my cgpa five carryovers and he gives you a song to sing for him because when you sing it brings him and that song begins to comfort you whereas you were crying about something after meeting with him you wipe your tears and you get up and walk like a king you have a challenge in your life you are struggling with a habit you are struggling with something and you go to his presence and you begin to sing and say lord something else is taking your place in my life and i'm reporting to you i'm a faithful bride i'm reporting to you that pornography wants to steal your place in my life i'm reporting to you that pride in ministry is taking your place and as a jealous god like a man who is fighting for his bride he will come and say let me see that devil that stands would you dance with me, oh, lover of my soul, to 
the song of awesome. Listen, there is not, there are people when you tell secrets about your life, you are in trouble. It's as you would have just gone to NTA and announced to the whole world because they will tell everybody they are just don't tell anybody. Oh. The next person will tell Sister B, say, I did, I don't know you. If anything happens, I've never met you. But the Holy Ghost is the only one who can listen to everything about you and still not complain. I don't know one man who has been with his wife and they've never had reason. The Holy Spirit will never quarrel you. You come with your weaknesses broken. You come with all sorts of things. When men reject you, when that guy says you're good for nothing, you refuse to sleep with me, go. You come coming back to the secret place. That's the place of strength. Men of God who do not have the secret place, when persecution starts, and now, see, the, the apostolic ministry comes with heavy persecution. If you are not a man of the secret place, you will never last. Men will question the source of your anointing. Men will question the reason why crowds are gathered like this. Men will question all kinds of things. When men shout and people, Oh, you think it's everybody that sends me nice text messages. I wish so. I wish so. When I get all those things, I look forward to my hour of prayer. And I just go into his presence and I lie down flat. The one who can love me the way I am men will tell you you are looking too fat you are looking too slim the holy spirit says you are okay just stay there you are okay i don't need any shedding weight i don't need your hair is not rough you are okay come on now ladies you have given your heart to a man of inferior value why not come to this spirit you gave your whole life to a man you were sure that you are not the only one in his life but this is one who has pledged commitment with you forever You never know what true love is until you meet the Holy Spirit. When you meet the Holy Spirit, you start searching for a man that can give you the same effect in your secret place. And if you don't find it, you don't say yes to him. So when one brother comes because he likes you, he now wears suit and comes for koinonia. When he's talking to you, you are looking for that spiritual effect that cannot be faked. And you say, my brother, you talk like you're a Christian, but I don't see that signature. Meaning you are not a man of the secret place. Hallelujah. Worship. Do you, do you spend time? I'm telling you, when I'm in the presence of God, I'm not Apostle Joshua Selman. I throw away all of those things and I roll before him and I cry like a baby. And this is how I prepare for meetings. Brothers and sisters, this is how I prepare for meetings. I talk to the Lord and I say, Lord, Friday is miracle service and so many people are coming right now and I cannot help them. I'm, I'm but a young man. There are so many expectations on me and I hear the Spirit of God telling me, don't worry, we'll go together. We'll do this. That's why when I sit down, in my mind i'm saying okay holy spirit worship team is now ministering we are ready to go and i can just feel him saying go 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 and do it prove to the people that you are not alone ah! and as he left me not once many guys will run away from you when the going gets tough is that true i remember a guy who was making noise about a lady i will marry her he found out that she had a problem with bedwetting and it was a demonic problem the lady was a very responsible and godly lady it's just that it had been there for a while when he found out ah, the brother said you know guys i'm busy oh, please don't disturb me i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy and the day this lady came and she cried to me and it pained me because i know the brother i said such a virtuous lady so you are already trying to you've not gotten married but there is something about her life you are not proud of and you are now running away that's the same thing you will do when you get married but the holy ghost he will give you a garment you want stain it outside when you come you see him holding soap already waiting for you while you are trying to explain he says there's no need that you came into my presence is a sign that you are not a rebel to the song of all song can we sing this song just once as i prepare to round up would you dance with me Would 
Just the voices, just one more time. From the depths of your heart. Would you dance with me, oh lover of my soul? To the song of all songs. The third component of intimacy with the Holy Ghost is prayer. The first is the study of the word. The second is the ministry of heartfelt praise and worship. God blesses you by a keyboard. God blesses you by a guitar. Are you getting my point? Even if it's only one key, learn it. CFG and the minor. Just sit down and lie down. That's all you know. You are not learning it to sing somewhere. One day people will come and listen to you. I remember when years ago when i used to be we were three myself steve strings and andy now called amber sage is a gospel musician three of us were roommates then in Danfodio, and we would worship goodness i was like a madman sometimes i would lie down and they used to keep the keyboard of winners campus fellowship then then steve was the vice president of winners campus fellowship so they used to keep the equipment in our room praise god and i'll just get on the keyboard and steve will just take the guitar and you know his fingers those those anointed fingers goodness and steve will begin to play and while we're just playing the glory of god one night something happened i'll never forget myself andy and steve we were just singing and worshiping for hours and then we held three of our hands and brothers and sisters i tell you the truth we could not lift our hands god came into that room when you see a man of the secret is ever looking young it's not about eating well. He shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. You see a man of 60 years, 65 years looking as if there is a supernatural ability working because there truly is. If it's a life-giving spirit and you stay with a life-giving spirit for so long, something happens to you. Do you believe me? Absolutely. Prayers. Especially praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit is a mystery that initiates and sustains true communion. Many of us come from circles where the subject of praying in tongues has been challenged. I came from an orthodox background and I understand what it means. I went to a, a seminary and I, I have touched different orthodox circles. So I understand the way Pentecostals taught it was a terrible way. Nobody would... They, 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 and, and then all of the rascality and madness that happened around praying in tongues made it look as though when the Holy Spirit came upon people, he made them idiots. They did not teach us that tongues was a mystery. It was a language of heaven that was supposed to enforce communion. It's a secret code of communication. We were not taught like that. I'll never forget the day they were going to pray for us to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I didn't understand anything. The man was teaching, I was feeling like sleeping. The only thing I know is he called two people and he told one to run on one leg and the other one ran on two legs and he said, that's it, praying in understanding tongues. That's all I remember. And then we sang one song. Hallelujah, Jehovah reigns. Hallelujah, Jehovah reigns. Hallelujah, Jehovah reigns. Give him the glory that he deserves. That's all. And then we got filled with the Holy Ghost. When I started praying in tongues, I was wondering. I said, ah, oh God, I hope I'm not just joining everybody and lying. Maybe they received the real thing. Because some people were falling. Me, I didn't fall. Nothing happened, but I was praying at least. I doubted that thing for days. But I began to see transformation in my life. In JS2, I was made the timekeeper of the whole school. There was a grace in my life that I could not explain. JS2, very small boy, quarter to five, every day the Holy Ghost would wake me, physically. 
someone would tap me quarter to five quarter to five we had a matron called miss rhoda wonderful woman she's gone to be with the lord now one day when i woke up five on the dot i would ring the bell she called me and laid hands she said you're an exceptional person i would study just once i'm serious i never have to read again once it was supernatural then we started one one prayer evening meeting called operation catacruz We were tired of the nonsense that was happening around so we myself and five guys we were like the apostles of the school five of us very small we did wonderful things wonderful things one of them was a sickler he was like our peter and all through that time that that devil of infirmity left oh we did mighty things i prayed for people who were stammerers and all of a sudden the stammer the stammering will leave i for us it was not a big deal because nobody taught us that this thing was great. You need honorarium. You're a great man. No. We just did our thing. And then at a point, they now started bringing a lot of priests and they were teaching. They brought a lot of people. They taught and we knew it was us they were talking to. And then eventually, we threw away all these things of God. It was something in my spirit. And when we threw away all those things, it was in less than two months, our leader died. I was with him the final moment in the hospital. His ribs were swollen. That sickness came back. What he was delivered from. They were born triplets. One died. There's only one who is alive now. And I looked at him in the hospital. I told him, don't worry, you'll be fine. Little did I know that that would be the last time. Because we ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I cried one day, many years, when I realized that that was the reason. We left him. We actually asked him to walk out of our lives. Take your place. Take your place. I will never ask you to walk out of my life. Take your place. Take your place. That gentleman died. Most of the great prayer warriors who were doing great things. I tell you, many of them today, some of them are drunkards, some of them are whatever because they preach to us that forget the, you know, the Holy Spirit, blah, 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 blah. Some of you right now, you are at the verge of throwing away. The only thing you have not thrown is praying in tongues. You've thrown every other thing. I want you to reason this. You look at someone who is about to dry, nothing is happening in her life. And then you are asking her to sacrifice something. Jesus was having a crusade. He was the organizer and the conveyor of the crusade. And then he said, go and feed the people and there was nothing. And then Andrew found a young lad. You would call it bullying. Our generation knows how to abuse words. You would even call it an abuse. Collected the boy's loaf and bread, his lunchbox, and took it to Jesus. And said, this is what we've been able to find. And Jesus said, fine. I thought Jesus was bad. So, such a harsh and wicked adult. You mean you bully this? Go and return it back. I am love. But Jesus said, that's it. Have you always wondered who had the remaining 12 baskets? The boy was willing to sacrifice a moment of satisfaction to create something. Many believers do not know how to sacrifice now to smile. This is a principle that does not just go to seeds alone. Sacrificing the convenience, luxury today, so that you can carry an anointing and a grace that will be able to speak tomorrow. Sacrificing today to discipline yourself and learn the principles that will make you successful. You want to experience restoration and indeed it's a principle that applies to many mysteries in the spirit. Sacrifice. A few minutes ago you were shouting and now Koinonia is quiet. Why? Because it's a reflection of your unwillingness to part with things today and gain them tomorrow. If you want to be great, listen to me. 
if you want to define the limitation that comes with this system, get used to this language. Sacrifice. You will always give up something to go up. You won't hold what you have and still rise. The lighter you are, the higher you fly. Are we together? Sacrifice. Praise can be a sacrifice. Your seed can be a sacrifice. Your service in the house of God can be a sacrifice. Your honor to the vessels of God can be a sacrifice. You want to experience restoration. Listen, let me teach you something powerful about restoration. The blessing is not in what you have lost. The blessing is in what you have left. There's a very strange story in the Bible. I think it's in the book of Hosea or Amos. That a shepherd was trying to rescue a lamb that had been eaten by a lion. The lion so ate the lamb that there was nothing left. Only one ear and two legs. That was all that was left. Yet the shepherd still ran to still rescue the lamb. What will you do with one ear and two legs? Eating the intestines, eating all of this. But in the realm of the spirit, it is not what left you that is the issue. It is what you have left. What you have left is a sign that God is still interested in restoration. That's why everything did not go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Most times we forget what we have left and we keep regretting. Oh God, this one left me. A relationship left you but your health is still with you. That health can be the seed that will bring back another relationship. Your job left you but your praise did not leave you. That praise can be a sacrifice that will bring another job. Are you getting the, the way this thing works? There is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. There is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. Listen, let me repeat myself. There is always something in your life that you have today that can bring back something you lost. You had a miscarriage and you are crying and saying, Lord, this is the fourth miscarriage. You lost the baby, sad. But by the grace of God, you are still alive and you can speak. Use your health as a seed to get another child. The health that you have dedicated to praising God as a seed of sacrifice. Apostle, but I lost my father, he's gone. I lost my mother, she's gone. I lost my brother, he's gone. I understand and I sympathize with you deeply from the depth of my heart. But you are the seed that is left. Use yourself and your life to gain back what your father would have been and what your mother would have been. Everything they would have been to you. Sowing that seed of sacrifice. Someone can appear in your life and say, I may not be your biological father, but I take responsibility for your life from today. No strings attached. There is such a possibility. Are we together? Yes. They killed several children. The nation of Israel was under threat. And a woman carried her son as a seed and put him in a river and just said, Lord, just protect this guy. And God said, that son that you gave as a seed, I will use him as the deliverer to preserve them. Whenever you are afraid of losing things, you open the door for losses. That which I have feared most has come upon me. There are many of us, you are so afraid of losing things that you, you fear success when it comes because you think it will not last. Anytime good things happen, you are careful. A brother comes to propose to you and you are saying, well, I said yes, but the truth is I've not said yes first. I've had 10 people break my heart. That's what happened to the woman who met Jesus. Six husbands, five men shattered her heart. The sixth one is not even her husband and Jesus came. So she was careful. And Jesus said, me, I'm not like the rest though. 
and gave her an encounter. She became an evangelist instantly. Went and gathered people and said, come. What of the madman at Gadara? Do you know there was a time that man had his sense back? There was a time he was born. There was a day they dedicated him. There was a day the madness started gradually until he got to that acute state where even chains could no longer hold him. He was in a cave all by himself. So when they crossed over to the other side, demons came through him, but Jesus had compassion. He was seeing a man who had potentials to be an evangelist, to win 10 cities, yet he was under that situation. And Jesus said, we can do something. Now, when you read your Bible, I don't want us to turn there, but even with those demons, the Bible says the man worshiped Jesus. The remaining 1% sense that I have, the demons are making me look like I don't recognize you, but that ounce of sanity, I sow it as a seed and I worship you. And Jesus said, all right, all of you people trying to mess up this guy's life, you can go places, but let this guy be restored. The Bible says they came and they found him in his perfect mind. He went to the Decapolis, 10 cities, gathered people, and brought them to Jesus. The miracle is not in what you have left. I know that whilst you're sitting right now, there is a fibroid in your stomach. But can you use your mouth as the seed to take away that fibroid? Your stomach was affected, but you still have a voice. You can sing. You still have an ear. Your ear can be the seed, the sacrifice of attentiveness to listen to the word of the Lord can restore you. No man is ever helpless if you understand the mystery of seeds and sacrifices. Every time things leave you, forget about them. Focus on what you have left. Lord, I give you all your things. I lost my job. Lost my wife. Lost my children. I'm all alone. And God says, that's all you need. You are alone with me like Jacob. Use your aloneness as a seed. Sow it and receive an encounter. An encounter that will bring them again. Job understood this. He lost everything in his life. The only thing he had was his conviction. And the wife said, lose that one too. So, why are you talking like one of these foolish women? How else will he come back? Job said, though he slay me, I have lost my health, but I have not lost my voice. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Elihu and all and Ko were talking all kinds of nonsense. Job came listening to them. And in chapter 42, Job said, Well, I may not be able to give as I used to be, but I still have my mouth. I can be an intercessor. 42 verse 10, he started interceding for his friends. And God said, This is it. He turned his life around. And God turned the captivity of Job, 42 verse 10, when he prayed for his friends. Listen, there is always something in your life that can bring back something that left you. If this is the only revelation you have tonight, you will rejoice. Go back home and stop tear all of those sheets of papers that are archives of regrets and start writing what you have left. I still have my convictions. I lost a job, but I still have my certificate. Are we together now? I lost my car, but my hands are still working well. I didn't die in the accident. And when you put all those things, you say, Lord, I laid this at the altar of sacrifice. I tell you to bring back everything and everything. Sacrifice. Number four, very quickly. The fourth key to restoration is engaging the prophetic. The fourth key to restoration engaging the prophetic specifically prophetic utterances let me show you three scriptures that will bless you tonight Isaiah 42 verse 22 please give it to us media Isaiah 42 verse 22 but this is a people robbed and spoiled all of them are snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses they are for a prey and non it, for a spoil, and there is no advocate that prophesies to them, restore. 
for you to ever experience restoration, there must be the introduction of the prophetic into your life. The prophetic, the prophetic. Either as an operation of the word of God or as a ministry of those anointed to walk in that respect. You have to understand what I'm teaching you. Without an encounter with a prophetic grace, a prophetic office, or a, a prophetic dimension of the word of God, there is no restoration. It's impossible. Second scripture, Psalm 119 verse 49. I found this scripture while I was studying and I felt it was very powerful and um, it would be great for us to see it. Psalm 119 verse 49. It says, remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Give us an amplified. I want to explain to you what this scripture said. Remember fervently the word and promise to your servant in which you caused me to hope. In other words, the man of God came and told you he has a covenant with God and said God made a promise to him that when he stands and does certain things, he will hear him. And you are now saying, Lord, remember, when that man of God spoke to me that something about his altar and his covenant can bring me breakthrough, I believed it. And he said, remember the word, the promise you gave your servant upon which I now hope that it will work for me. That's why sometimes you hear people say the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of Oyedipo. So there is it's not some religious, you know, whatever it is. It is a system of invoking the personal covenant. God, aside from the Old and the New Testament, God has personal covenants with men till today. God can enter a covenant with a man, a family, because of something that was done and say, look, whoever does certain things connected to this, I will bless you. God had a covenant with Abraham. Listen, and anybody and anything that came out of Abraham. A sad story later happened, and then Ishmael came out. When Ishmael came out, the Bible says Hagar, Hagar and Ishmael were in the wilderness. Two of them were crying. Only the voice of Ishmael was heard in heaven. Why? The Bible says God had the voice of the young lad. A child is crying. The mother is crying. Only one voice is heard in heaven. Because God said, Abraham, you and anybody and anything that comes out of you. It's not God's concern whether it was a mistake or not. He is bound to it. It is still the reason why Ishmael today can still manifest certain dimensions of the blessing. Remember. The last scripture. Second Kings. Let's look at chapter 7. Actually, the whole is, is Elisha's encounter in Samaria, chapter 6, 7. But we're looking at chapter 7. Just two scriptures. Second Kings, chapter 7. We'll read verse 1 and then we'll read verse 18. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. This is the prophetic now. Samaria as a nation was ravaged by so much famine that the Bible says women were eating their children. Mothers, please think for a minute. Think of roasting the leg of your child and watching it roast and yet not being afraid. I've heard of people drinking their urine because of test, but I've not heard of people eating their children. So Nigeria's recession is not as bad as it was here. The Bible says women, as compassionate as they were, were eating the same children. Eating your child is like eating yourself. The child came out of you. It's the same thing as cutting yourself and eating it. And this is what happened. And the prophet came and said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Listen. He said tomorrow. About this time. Shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel. In the gate of Samaria. Look at me. Let me teach you something profound. The miracle. This tomorrow. Was not something God revealed to the prophet. And said that's what I want to do. The, uh, the prophet chose the date. When that land will be delivered. 
listen. This is not revelation. It didn't say God revealed to me. In other words, I'm just giving you a superior information. There is a difference between revelation and creation. Revelation just gives you a prior knowledge of what is there anyway. Creation makes it appear and manifest. Like the testimony of our dear lady who goes to her room and sees piles of money, physical cash. Now that's creation. Revelation is I can stand here and say there is a brown envelope in your room. Go and check it. I didn't put it there. I only help to guide you so you go and find it. This prophet was not creating. This prophet, I mean, he was not revealing. He was creating. He says, look, I understand that part of the privileges of prophetic ministry is to appoint to people dates. The realm of the spirit has events without dates tied to them. It takes the prophetic to appoint dates. That's why through the prophetic ministry, you can go into five years ago, pick an event that would have been your testimony that was corrupted through witchcraft and fast forward it and appoint a date in your future to make it happen. You have to believe this. Otherwise, how does God restore years? Are we together now? Time is only subject to this realm. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of happenings that are manipulated by the will of God and the intelligence of citizens on the earth who know how to make it happen. So there are events that represent the will of God. There are certain dimensions of his will that are fixed according to his predeterminate counsel. But there are others that are flexible left to the intelligence of the saints. Such as your miracle today. It's not God that decided that today will be your miracle. You would have chosen to remain at home. Jesus was passing a city called Nain. Are we Bible students? It was never his plan to raise any dead body. He was minding his business. He was not on evangelism. And he saw people crying. And then he said, what's going on here? And they said, there is a woman ravaged by witchcraft. Her husband dead, her only son dead. And Jesus said, wait a minute, bring down that coffin. There and then, he decided the destiny of that woman. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This issue of one day, one day is faithlessness. You can insist. The Bible said today, if you hear his voice, you can choose and say, Lord, today, today, I'm tired of this hangover of nonsense around my life. Today is the day your faith can turn it around and bring you a miracle. You believe that? Say amen. Listen, you are the only one who continues to progress in time. The realm of the spirit does not progress in time. The time is bare. Are we together now? So in the realm of the spirit, you don't, there's no such thing as past and present with God. So when you say, God, remember five years ago, you said you would do something and you did not do it. God said it doesn't make any difference. It can still happen. And you say, Lord, but I'm older now. God says, and so I can readjust it to still fit the older you. Lord, you gave me a word that I will marry at 21, I'm 35. And God says, no problem, I can't do it. Lord, I plan to have six children. God says, it doesn't make any difference. Six years, two, two years with twins. My word has come to pass. Lord, you said you would prosper me, but this has not happened. I would have gotten a job. How much was the salary that time? 20,000. How much would you have had now? 1.2. God says, I give you an idea. That brings you 2.4 in one month. Listen, please, you have to believe what I'm telling you. Otherwise, we're wasting our time here. The prophetic is powerful. It can appoint dates for spiritual events and cause them to be made manifest. You've seen this happen in Koinonia. Somebody will write jam, for instance, and have 160 something. And all of a sudden, a word will come and you go and check it again and see 260 something. How do you explain that? Someone writes an exam and just remembers writing his name alone or question one. And then comes and a word comes and result comes out and is in 4.8. How oh, please, brothers and sisters, we are intelligent people, but we are also spiritual. Never allow your intelligence take away the place of the realm of the spirit in your life. 
the same way you are seated here and say, Apostle, can God do it? Brothers and sisters, He can. Look at my life. Look at this ministry. The Word of God. Can God cure that sickness? Yes, He can. I repeat, yes, He can. Can God turn around my captivity? Some of you are not sick. But what is wrong with you is better sickness than that problem. God can still turn it around. God can turn it around. In the name of Jesus, God can turn it around. The Lord declared and said, I shall announce to us that this miracle service is dedicated towards restoration. I truly believe every word of God. And I believe that one of the things God is going to be doing tonight is to call back things. Compress time for people. Call back things. Please believe it. Believe it. Believe it. I am a testimony. I've seen God bless people overnight. Overnight. Ha, he said, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Sometimes life can whip you to a point where you look up and say, God, I have served you. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't rob anybody. Why is my life like this? Then God tells you, locate the power of prophecy. Locate the power of prophecy. Some of you didn't want to come tonight. You can come and still look and say, wow, what an interesting service. Or you can come and say, Lord, it is within your power to change this situation. Why should we pro prolong it? It's within your power. It's within your power. You've seen the testimonies. We never announce anything here that is not verified. You've seen all the great testimonies. No matter what is wrong with your life, your ministry has crashed down. You were once on fire and once anointed, and something happened. You can't tell what it is, but that grace and that unction doesn't look like it's there again. You are preaching, and even you, you know you are not blessing anybody. Again, like the hair of Samson, it can come back again. My help, my help, my help, my father has died, my mother has died. I'm an orphan. There's no one to take care of me. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There are many fathers and mothers. Prophecy just needs to bring two of you together. Tonight, if you believe what I'm teaching you, you will be amazed to see the way the Lord will turn your life around. Turn your life around. Apostle, I was pregnant. Now I'm seated. Just give me a few minutes and watch a miracle that will bring tears from your eyes. I believe God. I am one man of God that believes God can turn around any situation. It will always be like The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Soon or jobs are finished. A job is not with any government. A job is in the word of God. Listen to me. Don't cry. No. Stop that tears. He said, weep not. When the book is open, tears will stop. God didn't gather you here. Some of you traveled so far. There are some of you standing in the, in the rain, standing outside. God is too faithful to come and waste your time. In the next few minutes, I want you to believe this. Please listen, listen. Don't be part of those. Now is not the time to pinch around and hope. Will God do it? Apostle, I lost money. Apostle, I lost joy. Apostle, I lost a job. They blackmailed me. 
say unto restore. And let me tell you something. God can restore fast. He can restore fast. 430 years in captivity. One night God said that's all. When God arises, El Gibor, the mighty man, when he shakes himself and stands up and says, I want to leave David down, let me tell you, I don't care what which way. I have seen God lift people who were not even prepared. I ju he just chose that I want to make a specimen with this person. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. We're about to pray. I came here with all my heart, believing that God will restore somebody. If you belong to any of these categories, except you've not lost anything, you can sit down. But if you know there is something in your life that you know must come back, I'm not saying may come back, it's not a discussion. my joy can come back. I've lost my peace can come back. I lost my husband. God can fetch me wherever he is and return him. Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to pray for a few minutes. It will be very fast. I don't plan to waste our time here. We're going to be very fast. The message is already complicated. It's not when I start ministry. As soon as we start praying, I like you. Please, if you have never believed a man of God in your life, why don't you do this? Just, just be childlike for once and say, Lord, I believe the word of your servant. I open up my heart. I want you to open your mouth and call things back into your life. Call opportunities. This atmosphere is anointed. Call.
saw that I was just walking around. Let me tell you something with prophecy. The prophetic is very powerful. You can be acting, but in the realm of the spirit, I'm not just moving here. It is within the power of God. I have done this little, crazy, foolish, prophetic act. It's time for those who this word, you see, this thing I've done. Hold on, please. I'm not everybody. There are a few people as I've done this now. The Lord is asking me to do it three more times. As I do this three more times, if this, God will restore people. But it's not everybody that is using this prophetic act to restore. If you belong to that category as I'm turning the third time, that anointing, that grace, when it hits you, just know that God is restoring you. Just know that God is restoring you.
this is what God is doing. Let's just flow with the Spirit. Literally, there are some of you, you're going to feel a wind blow around you. And a garment is like a change of women. And he showed me Joshua the high priest. And he was standing. And Satan wanted to rain an accusation. And he said, is this not a rod that I've taken from out of fire? In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, all those that God is changing their garment, Really? 
relationship that has made you to distrust any man that comes into your life because when they come you think they are like the ones who came before a past job a past breakthrough a past wife a whatever it is has stopped many people from moving forward every time you see success it looks like the way you rejoice yesterday before failure came so you are even afraid of it no For your business, then it crashed. Now God sends a helper, He's giving you 500,000. Instead of receiving it, He's reminding you of yesterday's failure, and you are afraid. You are afraid of embracing your future because you think it will look like your past. In the name of Jesus Christ, I once again separate you from your past. serious prayer. I want you to believe this. There are people here as they are standing. Believe me when I say nothing is working. There are some, some aspects are working. We are still coming here. But the Lord is asking me to address issues. Some of you as you are standing here inside and outside, online, if you will be honest with yourself, nothing is working. From marriage to finance to job to academics to life to health, everything is down. For you, everyone lift your hands. The truth is, you, you won't know it's the prayer that will tell you because you may think things are working. I want to pray for you. Ah. I'm seeing, I'm just seeing rings like rings of fire. This is what I'm seeing across inside and outside, especially.
you Yoruba? You are Yoruba? Yes, sir. From Akure State? Yes. Where are you from? Odo no, no State. Odo is what? This one that is Akure or Odo. That's what. You are coming from Akure. Yes. And because I'm seeing a car, and that's where you are coming from. Yes. Where are you coming from now? Akure. That's what I'm saying. Yes. The Lord is going to change your life totally. Right? Who is Lake Stand here, your life is about to change. Look at him, sir. The Lord will do you a miracle. This lady wearing this, this lime thing, God is not done with you. I've seen an angel pouring oil on her. This one standing. Huh? Help her. God is not done. I'll come to you shortly. We're going to do this very fast. Hopefully, before, by the grace of God, between now and the end of the day service to a vigil. It's not just prayer. By God's grace, I will trust God for grace to prophesy upon our lives. I will go section by section, inside and outside. Prophecy is powerful when it's done with understanding. It can wipe your tears in one minute. Lift your hands. You are laid up. Augustus, yes, Augustus or Augustus, something that has been Augustus, Augustus or something like that. Augustus, I'm hearing like Augustus, please, we have to finish fast because we're going to pray for this. Augustus, change the story. Jesus, something just left you, you are sick, that sickness has gone now. In the name of Jesus. life by hustling. You make it in life by divine direction. This is what God is saying. What's your name? Just bring them, but the name I hear is Augustus, but I will pray for you something, Augustus. My brother, hold my hands. This is not about hustling. Huh? It's not moving around, it's walking circumspectly by the Spirit and in grant you grace. Hold my hands. The Lord will wipe your tears in the name of Jesus. I bring this oppression to an end. That man holding pictures, run, come. Your breakthrough has come. Run, run, come. Stand here, where are you coming from? I'm looking at you. You are not in Zaria. From Kano State. You are from Kano State. Who is this? No, no, I'm not. I'm looking at your picture. My mom. What's wrong with her? Nothing is wrong with her. She gave me something for you. Your mom is sick. You don't know something is wrong with her. Hold on, please. If they are manifesting, just leave them there. Please, let's be fast. I want to pray for you. This one. She's my sister too. This is your sister. If I don't pray, I'm seeing this girl inside the coffin. Where is she? She's in Canada. Is she well? Yes. She's well. Yes. We have to pray for her. One of your sisters is sick. Yes. Sir. Is that true? Yes, Where sir. is she? She's in Canada. She's in Canada. The same thing happening to that one is about to happen to this one. Do I know you? That's what I'm telling you. God wants to change this thing now. You are a sincere person. Now what do you do? I'm a banker. Sir. You are a banker. I will pray for you. So that they will not cause trouble and steal money and you in your group. There's already trouble. Yes. Is yes, that sir. true? Yes, sir. In your office. Yes, sir. And if I don't pray for you, they are going to sack you by August. I want to pray for you. Correct, sir. You're August. Correct, sir. That's You're what correct, stand up. That's what correct, they told me. Hold it. If I don't pray for you by August, you are leaving at once. But there is a God. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. Come, sir. I don't know you, and I don't know how your mother got to know me, 
but your mother loves me with all her heart. Is that true? Yes, sir. I want you to tell your mother that her son is blessing her from his heart. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. I'll pray for you, sir. Huh? Because people have to be careful. There is a group, this bank group, all of you have problems. They are going to make you to pay some amount of money that is missing. And they are going to drive all of you. We need the mercy of God. Huh? Yes, and for your sister, this is witchcraft. God is coming in to step in. You're a very nice person to come in. In the name of Jesus. The same thing God is delivering you from is what is delivering the person shouting there. Let it turn now. I lay my hands upon you. Ugechuku. Is it Ugechuku or Ugechuku or something? In the name of Jesus, I speak favor. Sir, look at me. As I laid my hands on you, I saw you climbing a ladder. Watch this. This is how you will stand here in Koinonia to testify. Listen. I want everybody to look at this brother very well. Know his face. Because he's going to come and stand here and testify of a dramatic breakthrough that God is bringing to his life. Is it Ugochuku or Ugochuku? Which of you came from Southern Canada? You come and stand. Your miracle has come. Jesus. Stand up, sir. What do you do? Watch with attention. Careful. Federal Medical Center. Yes, careful. I want to pray for you. If God were to do one thing for you, what will it be? You're a wise man. I want to pray for you. God is going to lift you. Do you know that the hand of God is upon your life? Not just for, like, hand of God, even to tell people about Jesus Christ. There is an evangelistic grace on yes. your life. Yes. God has revealed it to you. Yes. You know it. I've been doing that. I was together in your program. Uh, in soup. Two days program, you came at Cape. Oh, you were there at the, the, at yes, the meeting. You were of part of the committee people yes. there. Yes. Because I see a man that God will use greatly in outreaches. I'm seeing signs and wonders. God will use you greatly. So I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let an anointing, something will come upon you now. I tell you, you will rise up from this night and begin to walk miracles like you held the champ. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus, the same thing is happening to that person. I release that grace. I activate your spirit, man. By the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. There is a spirit troubling this brother. Stand up. Come. Lift your hands. Let him go now. Out. In the name of Jesus Christ. He came to receive impartation. What you need is deliverance first. There is a, a spirit that is oppressing you. Mama, can I talk to you, ma? Please. Where are you coming from, madam? Abuja. You believe that God is going to change your story. In the name of Jesus, you will. I want to pray for you. Please hold my hand because the Lord said, I should bless you. The Lord said, I should bless you. There is, I'm seeing, I'm seeing one. Kai. The Lord is showing me the vision of a lady. I'm looking at this table and I'm seeing, I'm not seeing a table. I'm seeing a lady. You are wearing like blue, a blue cloth with her tie. You are crying now, cleaning your tears. And you are asking the Lord that I will locate you. You are inside here. No, you are wearing blue. No. No. I will pray for you. The person is coming. You wore something. That you tied your head with. Madam, run and come. You are the one I'm talking about. I will pray for you. Look at me. Where were you sitting? Where, was she inside here? Yes, sir. Where, is, where are you coming from? Kemi State. State. I'm going to pray for you. He said, I should tell you that he's bringing captivity to an end in your life this night. Captivity to an end. You believe it? Let it be yours now. The power of the Holy Spirit. My sister, look at me. 
shame and reproach. I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Hold my hands. Let shame and reproach leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. sound of a child and the Lord is saying a child should come now. Two years, two years. Two years. Where is the person? Come. Call the person's name now. No children. Two years. No children. We are going to pray. She's not here. This is your son. He's the one here in the Okay, you're standing for them. Mama, why should you give birth to children and not see your grandchildren? Somebody shout, no way. Shout it again, no way. The Bible says you will see your children's children. That's scriptures. It didn't say you will see them on your deathbed. You will see them and dance and rejoice with them. Mama, do you believe if I pray for this lady now, she will come back and testify here with the child? I believe in Jesus' name. It will happen. You Jesus. believe. What's her name? Her name is Adama Issa. Adama. Adama. Yes, Jesus become pregnant. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This one. Yeah, the medium. This is the one. No, no, I'll pray for him. This one is again. Winter. Winter. In the name of Jesus, I declare you are blessed. Mama, the pain you feel in your back sometimes. Diabetes. Oh, no. I will pray for you. You have fibroid. Yes. You have diabetes. Yes. You have ulcer. Yes, sir. What does this look like? You see how the devil is? Fibroid, diabetes, ulcer. A woman like this. Then her own children. Barrenness. Then this one. The 
there's no speed in your life, come and stand here. You are you that you are the gentleman, there's serious retrogression. I have to pray for you. Huh? You love God, but you are not moving forward at all. I have to pray for you. Huh? Is that true, Mama? Repeating, repeating, repeating. That's what I'm saying. It's not moving forward. Yes, sir. You believe in the message I just preached that God is a restorer. I believe. My Jesus. Mother, it's not that you are lazy. There is a spirit that manipulates your results. You have been repeating forever. I have to pray for you. Lift your hands. You are the one I will start with first. Father, let me end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands on your mind and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit to have the mind of Christ. Right now, over. It is over in the name of Jesus. I pray for this, your children. Pray for this. Where is he? Husband. Yes. We were from Ladon State, but we live in Kano. Mumta and Bokos. Okay. In Aike, she made it. Yeah, Nana Kano. We have to pray for him because I'm seeing a serious spirit of delay in his life. We have to pray for him. And I'm seeing he's having problem already with his wife. He may not tell me. This is something we need to pray for. Um, I hope you are not embarrassed. No, no, sir. In the name of Jesus, we pray for you. Mama, let me pray for you. All sad that diabetes, fibroid, and, um, and, and ulcer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every single one of them, help her, let it go now. The same way it came, let it go. Every house has an entry and exit. Let this be the exit of this now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady is going to shout now under the anointing. God is removing fiber from someone's stomach. Now, this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone, I'm seeing this. I command it now. I command it now to happen. Those malignant groups, I command it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the power. Spirit, a loud shout is going to be someone with that loud shout. That's the end of it. It goes now, never to be told. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Before we pray for the sick, I want to challenge every strange spirit that is responsible for sabotaging the purposes of God in your life. Lift your hands. As I minister deliverance to you, it doesn't mean you are possessed. No, no. The operations of demons is such that they can take advantage of mechanisms, provisions in the realm of the spirit to manipulate people. I want to pray for you. I have to do this before we start praying for the sick. Inside, outside, I want you to be ready. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, anyone under the influence of any spirit, please get ready and pray. I see mighty deliverances happening. Any strange spirit in this place that is tying down the destiny of anyone. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. One, two, three. I command you to leave now. Go now. Go now. I command in the name of Jesus. By the power that is in the blood of Jesus. I'm still praying. Lift your hands and pray. For time's sake, you may not need to bring them out. Just, just leave them there, inside and outside, so that we can call those who are sick and pray for them quickly. In the name of Jesus, I declare every influence that is attached to your family, the family that is trying to rob you right now in Jesus' name. Speak. 
speaks against your life. In the day and in the night, he's speaking against you. I stand here tonight in the name of Jesus and I stretch my hands towards you. If there is anyone inside, outside, under the sound of my voice, who is a victim of the speakings of altars, I command them to die now in the name of Jesus. I cause those altars, they cease from functioning. I cause those altars. physical rings on your hand physical rings then it will disappear who is that there's someone here like that please quickly let me pray for you don't be embarrassed i want to pray for you the lord just gave me a revelation sometimes you look at your hand and you see you think it's a vision rings like ring on your hand you started seeing it in your dreams but now physically sometimes you see it whether the person is inside or outside, except if they are under the anointing. But please, I would like to pray for that person as we pray for the sick. Don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. It's a very serious thing I need to pray for you. This, this madam, come. This lady, the lady wearing lime, come. I want to pray for you. Witchcraft comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a small child within the ages of maybe 1 to 11. Now as I'm praying, the power of God is going to come upon that child and the child will start manifesting. I'm seeing this is, this is some demonic, diabolic thing. I'm not saying the child is bad. I'm just showing you what the Lord is showing me. Father, wherever this child is, I pray for our children now. Whether it is an initiation, whether it is anything occultic, I'm, I decree and declare right now, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever that little child is, I command those devils to live now. I command those devils to live now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command those devils to live now. Very quickly, we are going to pray for the sick. There are so many things God is doing in the realm of the spirit. There are so many things God is doing. There is a brother the power of God is going to come on him now, overflow to the one at the road. Please, I want you to bring him now. I want to talk to him. Overflow to. I see an angel of the Lord moving across overflow to, and the fire of God is falling on a brother. Please, I want that brother to come. The fire of God will certainly fall upon that person. Please let him come. Carry him and, and bring him. I want to prophesy to him. I'm going to give us a prayer point. Now, while we are praying, we are going to ask people to come so that we'll pray for the sick very, very quickly because I want to be able to have time to prophesy. Remember, I spoke about restoration. I want to use time to prophesy. Now, watch this, please. Overflow one, all the overflows, those who are sick in body, I want you to, when, when we finish praying, make your way to your various overflows and wait there. There will be people who will come to minister healing to you. We believe in the ministry of miracles. God has anointed us for this purpose. And by God's grace, we are not too many that we cannot lay hands on people one by one. And that's why we do that. So that everybody will have that sense of, I may not be able to lay hands on people outside, but there are men and, and women of God anointed and they will be able to also minister to you. Praise the Lord. Please make sure you are sensitive outside. I want to pray for that gentleman. That's him. Ah. Let it end now. I stretch my hands towards you. I bring it to an end. There is sorrow upon sorrow on this gentleman's life. The Lord is asking me to wave my hands. It comes to an end now. This guy is not the person. No. Just, just leave him there. At least he has received his own. Who is this one? From outside, overflow two. The person is supposed to be shouting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let this end. I'm stretching my hands. 
Jesus, I command the power of darkness over your life and over your family to be broken right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I breathe the life of God into you and I decree and declare that it comes to an end now. Um, I know there are many people here. There is a gentleman, please. I don't do these things to disgrace people. What's the name of that thing? That codeine. But your own is not just codeine alone. It's plus. Whether smoke, um, some of these funny things, you are here and you are tired of it, but you cannot stop. Please, where are you? Please don't waste our time. There's a gentleman that I need to pray for. Seems to me like that person is outside or inside. Please, if you are here, don't be embarrassed. I want to help you end this. I know there are many people a specific person God is talking to me about. Let's just flow as the Holy Spirit is talking, please. That gentleman, I want you to come out here and I want to lay my hands and end it. You are tired of it, but you can't stop no matter what you do. That's what you spend your little money on and this thing is crashing your life and destroying your destiny. Where are you? Let's appreciate it. said he who does not have sin should cast the first stone. When we call people like this, we don't condemn people. I love you with all my heart. The meaning of my name is the way to love. I love people. You look at these gentlemen, you can see the way their lives are. You see how disorganized they are. This is the devil. If we don't pray for these people, this gentleman one day will become a father. It doesn't matter. I prophecy for one is for all. Come and join them. I want to pray for you now. One minute, if you are if you are still thinking about it, just remain there. But you are saying, man of God, I'm tired of this thing, you have to help me. Quickly join them. God gave a word for one, but I'm praying because we have to pray for the sick quickly. Some of you, nobody led you into it. It's a spirit that just pushed you into this thing. You love God, but this thing is killing you. I salute your courage. I don't know if I would have had the courage to come out. I salute your courage. Come. Let, I think we should honor them. Come on, Koinonia. Apostle, does it matter? Of course it does. Of course it does. Of course it does. When I start praying, please don't come out again. If you are still coming, I want you to rush and come. Male or female, I don't care. Whether you are a male or female, that there are even ladies, male or female. Jesus is setting us free. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about it. Please come and stand quickly. Male or female, Koinonia, celebrate them. They are still coming. Let's give them one more minute. Since God is already talking to them now, let's just take advantage of the anointing here. Apostle, I don't take it all the time. Still join them. You take it. The most important thing is that you take it. Even if it's not all the time, you take it. Join them and let God help you. Look at me, brothers and sisters. I'm your friend. I love you with all my heart. Like I said, you may look at these boys. Please, let me give a disclaimer. Hold on, Mike. Be careful when you look at people's children and just point and think they are bad. These people need help. I interact with these people all the time and they will tell you they don't like it. It's a spirit. Some of them, nobody took, got them into all of these things just by themselves. Some of them had dreams. Some of them had strange encounters. But my Bible says, God bless you. Don't be ashamed. Come and join. Please give them room. Honestly, let's, let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. If you are joining, come. The Bible says... For this purpose, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy. That this, this, you see, this smoking and drinking thing is a terrible thing. 
you carry cough syrup, snuff it till you are almost dying, pass out and come back again and still do it. And then others sell that, that leaf that they tie. You collect it, smoke it, and all of that. Look at me. I want to pray for you. And I want to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your coming out here does not make me better than you in any way. Are we together now? We are only, we are only benefactors of the grace and the mercy of God. I'm agreeing with you. Most people complain. Most people gossip about you. I'm not gossiping about you. I want to help you. Koinonia as a family loves you. Now listen, let me challenge all of you, please. After this prayer, huh, all of you are automatically members of prayer department for the next one month. You are welcome to prayer department for the next one month. Praise God. So, this is how we do it here. I won't deceive you that once I just pray for you, you go back and meet those friends. They will laugh at you and laugh at me and say forget about them. And then before you know it, you will go back into those things. One of the laws of, of influence is atmosphere. You open yourself to an atmosphere and it destroy you. So after I pray for you, um, ushers, what will happen is you can get their names and their details. We we'll forward it to the, um, the prayer department and then we'll keep following up with you from there. You need to keep praying. You need to keep building your spirit. You need to be taught the word of God. And by God's grace, we're helping you. Some of you here will be doing what I'm doing some years to come. You will hold this mic in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you here, the ladies, you may be the wives of great men of God, evangelists and apostles. There is nobody, there's no such thing as hopelessness. To him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Stretch your hands, saints of God. If you are a mother here, stretch both of your hands. If you are a father here, stretch both of your hands. And say, use them as a point of contact. Whether your children are small or, or not, use them as a point of contact. We pray for you. We are praying for you now. That the power that is responsible for this living will end. I make contact with you. somebody outside. I may not ask you to come. You stole a phone on Thursday. Still with you. Go and return it after this service. Go and return that phone. You love God, but stealing a phone to sell it and causing trouble for somebody is not the way it happens. God can help you and God can bless you. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. If I have not touched you, just let me know and I will lay my hands on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you. I command that spirit to leave you. I command that devil to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that devil to leave you. I curse. Oh, you are standing in for your brother. Where is he? What a wonderful lady. In the name of Jesus, I use you as a point of contact. As it's happening to you, let it happen to you. In, hold on, don't go. Ah, okay, you are directing them. Okay. We decree and declare, have I prayed for you, gentlemen? In the name of Jesus, all of you are my friends. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we break this addiction from your lives. Join me and say amen. I pray for any association that will not let you serve God. I command those associations from today. Let them be a dissociation between you and them. Jesus. God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly. Now, we are going to begin to pray. Have I prayed for them? Have I prayed for you? This guy, you are going to be a man of God. This brother, this gentleman. Bring him. This young man is going to be a man of God. Hold my hands. You need guidance and mentorship. There is a call of God upon your life. Huh? That we we and whatever it is that is stealing the call, we cause it now. Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, self-time in the name of Jesus, I declare
decree and declare that every challenge in my life must come under the authority of Jesus tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Those who are seeking God, they are wanting to come out. Those who are seeking body, overflow one, two, three, inside. to bring the healing power of God to people and we are very happy we will continue to do it some of you are standing for your loved ones God has made this place a, a solution center and we honor him for it now please look up we are going to do two things very quickly um, overflow one you can go to your projector stand overflow two your projector stand overflow three and every other one four just join them somewhere there. Someone will come to pray for you now. Praise the Lord. While they are doing this, how many of us came with our prayer request? Hallelujah. Now, what I want you to do very quickly, those online, you can post it online and uh, we're going to connect with it by faith. If you have not written your prayer request or you've not written for your loved ones, do it quickly. The ushers are going to be waving the, a basket. Please, let's do it orderly. Just wave your prayer request and they'll locate you. You'll drop it there and we'll bring it to the altar while we pray. Very quickly. Praise the Lord. Pastor Jimmy will be outside, Overflow 1. Pastor Jimmy and Pastor Femi, Overflow 1, he's going to be praying. Pastor Alpha, you'll go to Overflow 2 um, together with Mike. Mike, you follow him, Overflow 2. Overflow 3, Benga, and Promise. Two of you will be at Overflow 2 and uh, Overflow 3 and any other Overflow there. Praise the Lord. We'll do it that way. Father, together we release a corporate anointing for miracles, signs, and wonders. We declare and declare right now that as we begin to minister to God's people, do a quick walk. Let incurable situations go. Let cancers go. Let HIV go. In the name of Jesus Christ, anoint everyone, oh God, that you are going to be using to lay hands on these people and let there be dramatic testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, God bless you. Please, let's go very quickly. We have, let's try to see how we can cover this in 15, 20 minutes. Are we together now? God bless you. Lord, thank you for healings. Thank you for miracles. Worship team, you help us. Bless us in Jesus' name. Please accept, listen. Please accept the people laying hands on you, ask you. You don't need to tell them what is wrong with you. Just stand by faith. Praise God. The prophetic is at work. If there is need to prophesy or talk to you, just receive by faith. It doesn't mean we have to touch the area. Just believe by faith. You go and check yourself or call your loved ones. faith. Hallelujah. This is not a ritual that we do. This is a revelation that God gave and an instruction that every miracle service we receive the requests of God's people. No matter how we try to reach everyone we are constrained by time and um, so we are presenting it to the Lord. These are the things that attempt to say Jesus did not die. These are the things that attempt to say the work of the cross was and is a lie. So we bring them before him and we say, Lord, these are the obstacles that stop the revelation of your victory from being established in our lives. And we trust this fire to descend upon them. Stretch your hands by faith. Stretch your hands by faith, believing, believing. 
I want you to pray and say the request I'm dropping here is the last one, the last time I will be dropping this request. Please pray. They will still have more, please. Those online, this is the time you connect with us. Those outside, you can stretch your hand to your, your projectors. God is doing miracles now. God of one. Let the angel of the Lord spread it. Now arise, O Lord. Signed unto death by reason of this prayer, they are delivered from death. Those who have been assigned unto failure by reason of this prayer, they are declared a success. Lord, turn around age long captivities. You declared unto us in this miracle service that you are bringing restoration. I prophesy that anointing upon this request. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let there be strange restorations right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to pray for you. This is the last segment. I want us to connect. Our time is gone. We'll do this very quickly. Please lift your hands as I pray for you. Finances, dead relationships, dead career lives. In the name of Jesus, hear the word of restoration. I prophesy, let it come back to life now. I prophesy. 
prophesy. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Every issue that has been a lingering issue for a long time and has refused to leave your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus, let tonight be the last night you will see it. Let tonight be the last night you will see it. He said, these Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more forever. I command that you see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every door that is supposed to have opened up to you, and we don't know why it has refused to open till now. In the name of Jesus, at this June miracle service, I swing those doors open for you. I swing those doors open for you. I swing those doors open for you. For those who are asking God for direction for the next level, beginning from tonight, receive encounters that give you direction. Those outside, make sure you are connecting. Receive encounters that give you direction. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your life. Every gift that is not yet speaking, every grace that is, is still dormant within you, whether spiritual gifts or physical gifts, I decree and declare right now. Shabras kata pakata kata kata, shekete kete kete, ma prato so doko to pa shekete ne. I command an awakening right now. I command a resurrection right now. Creative ability locked up on anyone here that has not found expression. I decree and declare life to your gift, life to your ability in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. There are many people here you are not walking in spiritual gifts. Paul said, I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that he may be established. I stretch my hands to you. Out of the abundance of help and God's grace and mercy, something is coming upon you now. I decree and declare all nine gifts of the Spirit revealed in Scripture alongside others that have not been recorded at the count of three. Oh God, according to the faith of your people, let there be a distribution right now. One, two, three. now take it right now step into those gifts i release it upon you i open up your spirit i open up your understanding to be fruitful towards this gift in the name of jesus i declare upon you the mantle of favor that has made the difference in the life of ordinary people Granting them access to platforms, access to people, access to resources. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive that mantle right now. Take that anointing of supernatural favor. I impart it upon your life. I impart it upon your life. Hallelujah. I pray for you right now. Everything that represents dishonor in your life. The Bible says, where thou hast been deserted, so that no man passes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I speak over your life. The kind of honor that lifts you and distinguishes you above your contemporaries. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Every dying ministry here, come back to life now. Every dying business, help them, help them please. Every dying business here, come back to life now. In the name of Jesus, every dying destiny here, destroyed your prayer life so that your the fervency of
of your prayer life has gone down. In the name of Jesus, I found those coals to come back alive. I found those coals of your prayer life to come back alive in the name of Jesus. I pray for the spirit of revelation like never before access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the operation of the world receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now I impart upon you the gift of faith let it be yours now in the name of Jesus I impart upon you the gift of faith capacity to do impossible things receive that grace in the name of Jesus I decree and declare one by one beginning from tonight the same way Noah opened the door of the ark and the animals started coming by themselves I command everything that should be in your life and has left you the same anointing that drew the animals one by one to the ark I command you to draw your blessings to your life now I command you to draw your blessings to your life now listen not go to look for the animals he just opened the door the same way you have opened the door of your destiny I command I'm saying it again I want you to believe me it doesn't take time it only takes the right word into your life I decree and declare again between now and the next month's miracle service let there be strange testimonies of restoration strange testimonies of restoration Whatever has not been working in your life right now, whether it's your academics, your marriage, whatever it is, I force it to work now. Anything called barrenness in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Whether they are here or connected by faith, I command anyone called Barry become a joyful mother of children. Become a joyful mother of children. I pray for your finances. Whatever makes this thing hard for you, I curse that spirit now in Jesus' name. I decree and declare illumination, grace to know what to do, and grace to succeed at whatever you do. Receive it in the name of Jesus. For those who are students, whether on campus, the university, or any other campus, I declare, most of you are on break now, you are about to resume. As you resume, in the name of Jesus, I put life to your academics. I command missing scripts to be found. I command wrongly calculated results to be corrected. In the name of Jesus, as you prepare to write your exams, I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. I prophesy like rain. Hear what I'm saying. I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here trusting God for a job, in the name of Jesus, between now and the next 30 days, may the God of heaven arise and give you a job that will bring tears to your eyes. Finally, I pray for you, in the name of Jesus, that if you have never stood here to testify, listen to what I'm saying. If you have never stood here to testify, in the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with Jesus, the firstborn of the begotten, and I command that God will give you a testimony that will be too big for you to remain on your seat. A testimony that will be too great for you to remain on your seat. A testimony too big to remain on your seat. I decree and declare, the spirit of death 
there is a strange manifestation of the spirit of death it always comes like a circle looms over territory and takes the life of people i declare let the seal of the blood the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family in the name of jesus let the seal of the blood the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family i cause accidents i cause any kind of tragedy from coming to any family in the name of jesus christ finally i pray for you i command in a way like never before the helpers of your destiny i speak over your life the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers even if they came before i call them again thank you for lifting Stand. I know that our time is gone, but I cannot let us go without giving an opportunity. Please, everyone stand. Any of you, please. Let's honor this altar call quickly. Help, help those under the anointing. There are people here standing and saying, man of God, I want to make it right with Jesus. Some of you gave your hearts to him, but for some reason, things began to go haywire. And you're saying, man of God, I want to return back. Some of you are yet to make this decision. Please listen to me inside and outside. Wherever you are, you are saying, man of God, if you will pray for me, I'm ready to surrender my heart to Jesus. I'm ready to start afresh or start anew. Wherever you are, I want to count five. Please, if you are coming, I want you to run. Clear the way for them. Our time is up and we have to be very, very fast. There are so many other things to do. Wherever you are, as we begin to clap for you, I count five, you should be here. Please run like there's fire on the mountain. One. Those coming from outside, please, protocol, help them, clear the way for them so that they come quickly. Quickly. Two. Koinonia, appreciate them as they come. Run to Jesus Christ. Overflow. One, two, three, four. Everywhere, please, quickly. Three. Please double up, double up, rush, rush, run and come. We're out of time, but this is a decision that is eternal. Come and encounter Jesus. God bless you. Come and encounter the power of God. Come and have a fresh start with him. He that did not withhold his only son, but offered him freely, how much more with him shall he give us all things? Keep coming. Three. Four. Five. Praise God. If you're coming, join them quickly. Those of you here in the front, I salute you. I congratulate you. While the rest are making their way coming, please, wherever you are, run, come. Catch up quickly, quickly. Are you rushing, please? Help us so that we can be very fast. We need to attend to people after service. I'd like you to lift your right hand and say this convincingly. Say this passionately. Say this sincerely. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you died for me, you gave your life for me. It's a powerful prayer you are praying. Tonight, I've heard your word and I believe in you. I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that Jesus is Lord over my life. I believe that God raised him from the dead and I declare that eternal life is mine today. Right now, I am a child of God. My sins are forgiven. I have the life of Christ in me. In the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus, I declare your sins forgiven. I set you free now by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I decree and declare that you begin to enjoy the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life. I pray for you that you will know the Lord like never before. I declare that the power of sin, the power of the flesh, the power of Satan is destroyed completely from your life in the name of Jesus. I declare that you have a new start from tonight 
and the Lord himself will continually be glorified in your life. You go forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you and thank you. A gentleman is waving his hands. I want all of you to just follow them. They'll have your details. I appreciate you. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.